Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Today, we have a very special, special, special guest. Mr. Nigel Alexander is with us. How are you, dude? What's up, dude? Chilling. Dude, thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Definitely, bro. A lot of people request Mr. Nigel Alexander to come on the show. <laughs> here we go. We got him. Finally. Got him. <laughs> hey, you're like the most, you're the original skateboarder YouTuber, dude. I think I've ever, like out of all the skaters. You're the most YouTube dude. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> basically. So I, I, it was funny when you guys, show, when you guys started talking. I can see the glare in Chris's eye get like flare up because he loves talking YouTube. Yeah, yeah you, I do. <laughs> I, I absolutely love talking YouTube because once you get into a world, it's your world, right? Yeah. And it's fun because like, and I watch Mr. Beast interviews and everything, and he's right too, man. A lot of people, they don't understand it. You know, they just think you upload something, whatever. You, some people go viral, some don't. I don't know, but it is, it's a hustle. It's a grind. It's a full-time job. And it's interesting because there's algorithms. There's, uh, you know, cover thumbnails. There's this, there's titling. I mean, there's so much stuff that goes into it. And you've been doing YouTube for 17 years <laughs> mm. Oh great! Who's that? That's Heath. It's Heath, Heath, huh? It is Heath. Heath has been on the show before. Put on blast. Turn turn, should I? Tell yeah. him. To, tell him to go ahead. Heath. Hey, hey, what's up, dude? Hey, we're on the show right now. Uh, <laughs> when did I meet you? Dude, I swear it was probably like <laughs> tail end of '99, maybe sometime in 2000. Yeah. I think it was tail end of '99. Okay. Amazing. <laughs> did he say the month? What did he a say? Tail end of ninety-nine. Oh, tail end. Yeah. 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 Cool. That that was the main question I had for you. I just had to make sure. I'm pretty sure I got everything else straightened out in my head. So when we talk about you, yeah, thanks, Heath Mo, man. Hell yeah. Thanks, Heath. Heath. Love you, dude. Yeah, yeah. Later, dude. All right. Later. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> um. Anyway, what I was saying was like, you're, you, I mean, you've been doing YouTube for 17 years. Since the beginning. Since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's, it's a constant battle of, of figuring it out as you go, too. I mean, we're still learning. They always turn, you know, they're updating their, they update everything, yeah. you know? So it's, it's a constant battle, I think. And um, I mean, we're, we're, like when you first started, six, let's see, 17 years ago. Let's, let's turn back to the clock, 17 years ago. YouTube comes out. And you're just like, hey, this is cool. We could upload our own videos. Let me do that. Yeah, it was a it was a really amazing thing for me because you know being behind the camera all the time, I'd always witness all the skating. But back then, it was only like four and one or a very select amount of avenues to put footage out. Mm. So I noticed right away. I was like, oh my god, we could show anything we want. Mm -hmm. So right away, it's like when I knew we could do that, I took my VX1000 to Skate Lab, set it up on a tripod. and This is, uh, this is your first YouTube video. Yeah, my ever. first video. <laughs> <laughs> your first video. So literally. The silent just, movie, by the way. It's it's a silent <laughs> movie. Yeah. That's so amazing. So it's, it's very similar to the videos I do now. I just set my VX1000 on a tripod and filmed myself skating. And I was so psyched that we could do this, you know, because there was so much amazing skating that would go on back then and no one would ever get to see it. Yeah. You know, there, wasn't, there, there wasn't a place to put Never. it. Never. Yeah. And, you know, and like, especially if you didn't have some way to put it on a VHS tape or something and mass distribute it to the world. Right. For sure. So right away, I was like, okay, this is great. This is where all this stuff is going to go. Right. So. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's brand new, though. Nobody, I mean, it's it's not even popular yet. It's, yeah. it's, just, it's just a platform. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's it doesn't get billions of views like it does today. No, not at a all. A minute, pretty much. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's crazy? Watching this, I'm sorry. Is that it? It is hard to distinguish what stance you are. <laughs> Have you gotten that? A lot of people saying that. Yeah, over the years, like me and Paul, um, when we first started skating, we were really into like Tom Penny, Eric Cost, and Ronnie Krieger. And you know, I started off pushing Mongo footed. Yeah. And I kept spraining my kickflip foot. So I wanted to skate. You know how it is in the beginning. You mm. just can't not skate. So I started learning everything switch because this foot could only pop and couldn't flick. So I just kept skating switch like crazy. I had to skate to school every day. It was like three miles. Oh, wow. So I would push all on 
one leg, the other leg would get tired. Like, oh, wait, I know how to push with the other leg. So I'd push with my other leg too. So <laughs> my switch and regular styles just kind of naturally developed equally. Wow. Yeah, the whole time. I should have done that when I started, dude. <laughs> Every, I should have done yeah. I'm always jealous because like the people who you see that have pushed Mongo mm-hmm. push a great switch. Yeah. And I'm always like, damn, I wish, I don't wish I pushed Mongo. But you know what <laughs> I mean? Like I almost wish I did because of well, the switch push. Let's yeah. get, I think... I'm going to say that I think most people push Mongo when they start. Oh, hell oh, no. I did. I did. Yeah, I, did. I definitely no, did. No, no, no. I, sure. I pushed correctly from the very beginning. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, of course you did. But everyone else. Oh, yeah. Everyone else in the world did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of my friends, uh, they didn't tell me I was pushing wrong. It was Clark Hassler. I remember it perfectly. He's like, Nigel, you're getting really good. But you push like an idiot. <laughs> and I was like, what? Wow. <laughs> Sounds about right. Clark Hassler. Right? Yeah. I lo- love that, dude. A little honest, huh? He's <laughs> super honest. So I was like, why didn't you tell me earlier? He's like, I don't know. So then I had to learn to push with my left leg, and it took a while. To get comfortable. Yes, yeah. it did. So what we just saw there was in 2005, uploaded to YouTube, your first video. Uh, were, were you already in 118 Board Shop and all that stuff, sponsored yeah. by them? Yeah, I got sponsored by 118 in, uh, I believe it was 97. Okay. And then um, I started working there around 2000. 2000 or 2001 i'm not exactly sure i worked there for three or four years when youtube started i think i was just quitting so i think someone showed me youtube at 118 board shop for the first time and i was like whoa it was like a pop locking video or well, something why, funny like that. why were you quitting though were you did you have something else going on it was because at that time too you're not getting monetized on youtube like no. this is a whole you didn't get monetized till years later yeah so there was no, that was, wasn't even a question back then. At that time, I was roommates with Paul Rodriguez, and Paul had just started talking to me about, like, hey, let's get a camera, start filming like we used to. Maybe we can make a video, or you could film me, or let's figure it out. Okay. And that's when we started working on Forecast. Mm. Oh. So, because Forecast was 2005. Right also. around then, yeah. Mm hmm. You didn't put forecasts on your YouTube cha- on your YouTube channel. No, back then. I mean, because you know, in 2005, it was still kind of like you just didn't want to do that yet. So you know, I, also I, videos ruled VHS. Yeah, and you guys sold that, didn't you? Yeah, we sold yeah, it. We we did good. really well with that video. Yeah. It was great. That was like the last video that kind of like did really well that I know of because we did great with it. How many units did you guys sell? On that, that? I'm not exactly sure. But I Not know. Not at ballpark. Nope. Really? We no were ballpark. All, we were all really happy with it. I didn't really pay attention to it. I was just right. psyched that it did well. Everyone liked it. Mike Mo blew up off of it, and you know we were oh, yeah. all just happy as hell. Who distributed <laughs> it? Um, I think it was uh, Syndrome. I think it was with Plan B. Sense. Gotcha. Uh, that makes mm-hmm. sense. Okay. I was pretty sure it was with those guys. Yeah, this was pretty much Mike Mo's first thing he really did blow up off of that well yeah. no, i mean fully flared is when he really really blew up yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah yeah but this is kind of like what kind of like introduced him little, to I mean, a lot this of set people. the stage beautifully yeah a little precursor yeah. for sure but, uh, and paul's part in this is amazing too yeah thanks man yeah. I, I did film a lot of that one i didn't film much of mike mo's part and i gotta shout out eric longdon and mike morasco yeah. they shot almost all of this at this time i was just really good friends with mike mo and we were kind of just friends it would skate all the time i edited the part and uh, was there for some stuff, but most of it, it was just, he was very focused and determined and did it all himself. I shot all this stuff for mm. the switch flip, but. This was, switch it, was insane, dude. <laughs> so good. It was kind of the same way so with Fully good. Flared, though. Eric Longdon filmed a, pretty much the whole, his whole part in yeah. Fully Flared as well. I didn't know that. Right. I right. shot one trick in Fully Flared. Which one? Uh, the fakey switch front crook, fakey three shove. Oh, wow. Oh. Fakey Under, at oh, that, underneath the, the thing. The yeah. ditch spot or whatever? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That was a fun spot. I loved going there and just skating with Mo. You have to climb down the ladder. <laughs> that yeah, was yeah, sketchy, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was good. That was good. So you move in with Paul. Mm-hmm. You're eight, at 20 at this time, 21? Yeah. Okay. Quit. Just quit 118 board shop. Yep, just stopping. And you guys filmed and put out Forecast. What's happening after Forecast? I mean, obviously, it got, it got great reception, you know, well, yeah. people's parts. Did you work for Paul? Is that what happened? Or do you just like, so you go to make forecasts, are you just, how are you working? Um, at that time, it was kind of tough. <laughs> 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 Sounds to me like you got a free place to live. <laughs> Not really. I would pay him rent. So How I would, much you paying though back then? Three, four hundred bucks? Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't a lot. 
Paul like cut me a homie deal. You yeah, know, it was yeah. great. He's a great dude. Yeah. What, what <laughs> Paul's still on City Stars. I mean, what's going on with him right I, there? He what? was on Plan B, I believe. Yeah. Plan B. Oh, yeah, that's how the whole forecast mm-hmm. was distributed through them. So, yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But at that time, making money was a little tough. But then we came up with the idea to start a website called skatesite.com with Paul, Jeremy Rogers, and Terry Kennedy. And mm. uh, that's how I started making money. And oh. that's how you got your YouTube to blow up because you were putting all the, you were hosting videos on your YouTube through yeah. that site. Yeah, they they originally were trying to get me to stream it through the skate site skatesite.com website but their player was just crap mm-hmm. oh, yeah, and the videos would shut down all the time yeah and the videos looked horrible so we decided to just go through youtube because i figured out how to encode them right and i didn't even realize that my channel was getting all these subscribers from it so then uh when skate Sot- when skate site shut down i checked and i had like twelve thousand subscribers i was like oh wow that's pretty cool. It's not and then, bad. Yeah. It's not bad <laughs> yeah. for pretty much not doing anything. I mean, you're going through another site. You're not even... Mm-hmm. How and long does Skate Site last? I, I don't even think it was around for that it's like long. like two or three years. Yeah. 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 Two or three years. Mm-hmm. But we were doing really well. We got great traffic. I think we were kind of competing with the barracks a little bit in the beginning. And then, uh, you know, um, Paul was really focused and working on it hard, but Jeremy and uh, Terry, it just got kind of... You know, they had other things going on, so it was Paul mainly carrying it. And then right. they decided, they told us, they're like, well, we're not going to pay you guys anymore, but you guys can keep doing it if you want. And Who I told was you like, that? Uh, I think it was the people at Wasserman and 4 and one So let's get, let me, let, let me get this straight. Skatesite.com, mm-hmm. or was, is that what it was called? Yeah. Skatesite.com. You guys were the owners or you guys worked for them? I mean, as far as I remember, sounds uh, like it was Paul, a Wasserman four hundred and eleven thing. Whatever it was, we were all young at the time. You know what I mean? Okay. But uh, I think Paul, Terry, and Jeremy were the owners, and uh, you know, whatever it was, you know, they didn't want to do it anymore, so they wanted us to do it for free. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm good, dude. I'm not going to do that for free." <laughs> yeah. So how were they, <laughs> were, were they putting ads? Yeah. Thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. Appreciate <laughs> the offer, though. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. I'm almost, I'm almost thinking like you sabotaged them because here's, here's why, right? <laughs> Listen, you're putting the stuff on your YouTube channel, right? Yeah. And how are they monetizing this website now? I don't know. If I they're mean, putting there, it there, through there their were player, ads on there, there were ads on there, like banner ads but, uh, on their website. But like, this was way before YouTube was monetizing anything. I mean, this is right. true. So but, I just wanted the videos to look good. Right. And their player sucked, and sure. the YouTube player was great. Okay. So. I hmm. went with that route. <laughs> yeah, I, I still think you sabotaged it. Dude. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe whatever happened, I didn't plan that, but it worked out in my favor. They're like, how come all out of in- our Hershey ads aren't being shown? <laughs> We're getting no clicks on these things. <laughs> <laughs> kind of worked out in all of our favor sure. in the long run, because if that didn't happen, I don't know if I would have pushed so hard on YouTube. So, well, right, we're coming right. up to the point in time too. You said it lasted a couple of years, mm-hmm. and now you you did another video proof. Yes, and was that in the? Were you filming that while we were doing Skate Site? Uh, right around the end of it, and then uh, I started working on that video. But by that time, YouTube had taken over, and it was very very hard to make that video. I was going through some personal stuff. My brother had passed away, mm-hmm. and I was in a really messed up place for a long time, and then. I was getting all this different footage from all these different cameras. I was mixing HD with SD footage. I was trying to figure out how to edit it right. Like it was a nightmare. I swear I burnt out probably about 75% of my editing energy for my whole life in that two, three year span. Mm -hmm. I was like dead after that. And uh, because YouTube had already taken over, that video did not do well. So it was really tough. I still get props for it but right. just the the mental strain it put on me and how hard it was to make that video i don't think back on it fondly <laughs> and that sucks too God. because like you're right it, it didn't really make the impact as forecasted no, i mean to be honest with you like it was a video that kind of came, came and went in my eyes too it did. like i didn't really see too much of it it was always forecast forecast yeah, forecast yeah. forecast mm-hmm. proof Which came along i'm I, very proud of forecast not say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. To, totally. you should be yeah thank you thank sure you. Yeah. great video still gets talked about today th- today i'm Which pretty hyped on that pause pause podcast okay i need to tell you guys that this episode is brought to us by athletic greens Ooh, we love athletic greens we do this is gold in a box right love this stuff <laughs> 
With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and Kelly's favorite thing in the whole world, aptogens. I love aptogens. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. Well, not only that. Ooh, tell me, Drone. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good. Nothing budget, only nothing, buttery, right? Nothing budget, yeah, please. Yeah. But it also supports better sleep quality and recovery as well. Tons of people take multivitamins, but really? it's important that you choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. And it's also better when you, you know, uh, not to have a full medicine cabinet full of, you know, supplements. Oh, man. You know, wait, wait so I can get rid of all my supplements? Yeah, I was just over at Kelly's house the other day, opened the cup, I was hit with supplements. Get the trash can. Yeah. <laughs> Throw them in there. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your oh. first purchase. All you have to do is just visit athleticgreens.com slash nine club. That's N-I-N-E-C-L-U-B. Again, athleticgreens.com slash nine club. Take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance today, there which is. is Athletic Greens. <laughs> Take over your health now. So we're doing, so proof comes out. Now, up until this point, also on YouTube, you were, because you've been on YouTube for 17 years. First year, you uploaded like one or two videos. Second year, two or three videos. Like you really didn't make the push until like two or three years, three year, three or four years into YouTube. Yeah. Then you really started uploading like a lot. So this is really good for me to talk about. And um, I'm happy to talk about this, but, uh, well, I was uh, around that time. I had lots of other videos uploaded that aren't on my channel anymore. But I started working with a group called Network A. And they told me I had to delete most of my videos that did not have, I didn't own all the rights to. So all these amazing videos that I did with like Street League and like Mountain Dew and Gatorade and Nike and all these crazy videos I did that had tons and tons of views that would have been great for my channel to yeah. have they told me i had to delete them this was from 2005 to when like 2007 like 2010 oh, like wow. so it was like almost five years worth of my best videos they told me i had to delete them is this, this is, something that you like like uh, had in contract where you had to you had no they, they just informed me and i just kind of was like well if i want to move on in my channel in the right way i think i should hmm. and it was hmm. one of the biggest mistakes i've ever done on my channel because they were some of the best videos that i've ever done you actually right. deleted it you didn't hide put them on no. private or unlisted i deleted them hmm. wow i mean you was know because of music stuff or what do you most of it music stuff yeah but oh, they back... were just concerned with other things too like i didn't own the rights you know yeah. whatever okay. so you know and and in hindsight you know i i doubt anyone from street league or any of those companies ever would have came after me yeah but you know they could have but I don't think they would have. We oh, know sorry them. About that. <laughs> we know them. Yeah, they're all my homies, you know? I mean, so. you, they, they, Deer Dick and, and Brian Ellis pushed you to do more YouTube. They did. They did. Big time. Right. So yeah. after that happened, I didn't think much of it. But then I looked at my channel analytics. And at that time, in 2010, I was already over 100 million views. And that was a lot back then. I was oh, like yeah. way above. And then after I reset it, it's it killed me i was like down to like 60 million damn it dipped yeah it took all of them away all the views away right <laughs> right Gosh. yeah so i called up cersei wallace and i was like yo what the hell just happened you know and i i should have talked to cersei more about this i think i talked to her a little but i should have asked her more like is this the right thing to do but you know mm. in, in hindsight everything's 2020 you're calling yeah. cersei because she's paul's agent well, she she was kind of my agent through this too for the network ad really yeah okay. she's she's helped me a lot cersei Amazing. wallace has been in my corner quite a few times and helped me get some really big deals in my life so you were kind of just listening to this network a bullshit yes. and you just and they didn't know what they were doing either really in all honesty damn hindsight so, is yeah. a bitch man it's it is premature yeah. it is so so some of my best videos I have them on hard drive somewhere mm -hmm. and you know they're they're there 
I mean, maybe I should re upload them. Maybe I shouldn't. I'm not do sure. Some, do a little TBT, Throwback Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, Every why Thursday. wouldn't you, though? Why wouldn't you do it? I'm just, I, I don't know. Because a lot of them, you know, it was all songs that I didn't own. Like, I'm not sure if that's going to affect my channel. Maybe mm. I should start another mm. channel to re upload oh, them. Man, that the might be kind of cool. Yeah. The whole you know? dilemma yeah. of channels and YouTube and music. Yeah. And, and back then, music pisses me off the most it on does. YouTube. Because back in the day, it was like, videos with it, it get muted you know uh it, people would put just different music on people's parts so now you're going and looking up like oh i want to go see heath kirchard and jeremy klein's birdhouse part and it's <laughs> whole different music yeah, yeah and not, it's it's a, yeah. it's a misrepresentation of the original video it is it's sure. almost better not to have it up 100 yeah. percent. i agree know. or so re-edit is it, it is it out there anywhere else or is it just you just took them down and that's it i took them down and you know i i can't i think i went on the street league youtube not too long ago and that first year i don't think a lot of the stuff is up okay so it's just all on hard drive somewhere i know street league they have all that stuff right because i gave it to them all everything i ever shot or edited they have it saved and archived and i have it too I don't so. see why. I mean, you know YouTube nowadays, right? You upload something, if a music, you, it's not a strike, but you can't monetize it. There's a few yeah. things. But nowadays, I mean, they, they are getting into the monetization split mm -hmm. with artists, too. Mm -hmm. So there is, they're, they're, they're well on their way. It's yeah. Some music stuff is, is still a gamble, you know, but... For sure. I should probably talk to the Street League guys and yeah. see how they feel about it. Yeah, for but, sure. You know, okay. that was some of my most proud of work I've ever done. You know, and deleting it, I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, can I do this? Like, yeah. really? And what year Dude. was this? This was in 2010? 2009, 2010, right around then. That's also, I believe, when your channel got monetized, right? Mm -hmm. So okay. you're working for Street League at, at this the time. point in time. Yeah. And Deer Dick and... And let me know if I'm getting this right or wrong. And Deer Dick and Brian Atlas <laughs> are telling you to push your YouTube. Yes. And right at that time, you get it monetized. Yeah, right around then. It was pretty crazy. Wow. So yeah, the timing. Yeah. And did you leave Street timing. League at that point? Where you're just like, I think they were low key trying to tell me to go. <laughs> <laughs> you should like, really do this yeah. YouTube thing. You got yeah. this. You got this. Yeah. <laughs> you got Set this. You up. <laughs> so you know, uh, the first season of Street League had ended, and you know they were trying to have me edit some stuff, and I was just kind of sitting on my hands. And I just didn't really know what I was doing, you know, and uh, I should have we should have ended on like in a better way, I guess, because I love those dudes. They they really looked out for me and uh, I just, you know, I quit and then uh, just started doing my own thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's turned out how it is now. Yeah. <laughs> so. right. When YouTube monetized your channel. Did you have to go back through all your videos and like turn on monetization? Was there like a, a to do thing that you had to do, or was it just so. automatic? I think it was automatic. When did you get your first check? Um, it took a couple months to break a hundred dollars okay. <laughs> in the beginning. Okay, but I remember getting my first check. It said Google on it. I was like, "Wow, this is the coolest shit ever." <laughs> do you remember how much it was for? Like one hundred fifty bucks. One hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, it took like three four months till it was like a thousand, and I remember talking to my ex-girlfriend at the time about how like I was going to do this and she's like you're insane this isn't going to work and I brought in my first check for like 1500 and she's like oh <laughs> cool yeah. I, guess do it. It. I guess it yeah. is gonna work. Yeah. I guess we're going to yeah. Roos Chris for yeah. dinner tonight huh? well I guess no one else you didn't know anyone doing this stuff no one you had no you had no one to look up to at this point nobody Dude, it's so rad because yeah. dude, you've always been. I've known Nigel for so long. He's always been a hustler, dude. And like, I'm not surprised that he would be in this situation because I, w I remember selling you product, dude, back in the day. <laughs> and I'm not sure if that arrived to you being able to buy a camera, but like, I remember I would go over to the house. I just have, I'd be like, dude, like, I'm, I got a bunch of stuff. I'm going you know, to come over. And he's like, dude, come over, please, dude. Like, I'm going to go sell it to like the people at, at my school. Yeah, it's perfect. I'm like, dude, <laughs> this is like a perfect thing. And like, you make money. I'm like, this is great. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> and no. you dub, dub selling it wholesale, you're going retail. Like, yeah, yeah, that's how it was, too. Yeah. I, I, uh, do we meet in 2006 or 2007? It was right around, so right around 2006. I'd say 2006. Because I remember Weston mm -hmm. sold me some stuff first. Weston Korea yeah, yeah, sold yeah, me yeah. some stuff first. Then he came over with you in the car and yeah. you opened your trunk and I was like, 
whoa <laughs> i was like wait how much can i buy and I'm you're like, just like kind of like oh yeah well take this 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 that i'm gonna save that you know like, we, worked out, we, we worked out like deals for everything i love it but it was it was awesome i didn't have to get a job in high school because drawn would come over i'd buy all the gear i would i it was nuts i was so popular in high school i loved high school i, I would be wearing new shoes new clothes almost every day Wow. All these people and kids are like, what the hell, man? I've never even seen those shoes. Where did you get them? Yeah, I'm like, so oh, sick. this is one of a kind. <laughs> Samples. Do you want to buy these? <laughs> 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 upselling. Yeah. Like, upselling over here. I would, I would get them from Drawn for like, you know, anywhere from 20 to 50 bucks, depending on what they were, sure. how used they were. And I would sell them for 100 to 120. Crazy. It was amazing. But Thank were, you, were, Drawn. It was what, like the best What, what, a, time. what Who, a time. It was get, great. <laughs> Who else were you getting stuff from? I'm so... Um, Paul was probably in the mix. Uh, at that time... <laughs> this well, is before all this that. This is before Paul. Because yeah. I graduated in 98. I met Paul... Or no, I graduated in 97. Yeah, the end of 97. And then um, I... Drank, yeah, 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 yeah. Graduated in 97. And then uh, I met Paul in... Oh, we'll talk about that later. Sure. But uh, yeah, this is all before that. I kept buying stuff off Drawn after, too, because oh. I still didn't want to get a job. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't want to get a job. I want to skate. Yeah. But at that time, you know, I was starting to get free stuff from, you know, my skating, getting sponsored. And that's originally why I got my first camera. Me and my brother figured out that if we got a camera and filmed each other, yeah. we get sponsored and sure. we didn't have to buy no skate product. Because my dad was like, you guys can skate. I'm not buying you shit. It's expensive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you need that shit quite often, that's for sure. Yeah. A lot. So you saved up your money from what were you doing at that point in time? Uh, okay, so how I got my first camera, me and my brother, um, we're Native American. Mm -hmm. So our tribe gives us money every like three to four months, it's like 400 bucks, 500 bucks, depends. Like our tribe's able to make money through a lot of different avenues. Get through, little like, quarterly checks. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we would get our checks, team up, buy stuff. We, we would buy like wood for ramps. Wait, 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 can, I, can I ask you a question really stuff. quickly? Are, is each person in the family getting a check or is it a per household? No, so it was uh, whoever's a tribal member. So if you had okay. a certain blood quantum, mm -hmm. then uh, you would get like, a check so explain me, the blood quantum thing how does that how does that work um, i have my card let me see i can tell you exactly how much it is. oh no i left it in the left it in there but okay. it's like you got to be like uh, it's a little more than half so on your card it says how much blood quantum you are oh, wow. but even to get a card you have to be that certain amount Otherwise, if you're like, you know, a tenth, yeah, you don't have enough blood, so you don't so, get to be a member. So you're not, yeah, you don't get, you don't, you don't get, get no good, checks. You don't get no checks. So <laughs> it is by, it is per, so you get a check, it is per person. It's not yes, per, per household. Person, so no. you get it, your dad gets it, your mom, like whoever well, is. This is, this is good to talk about because my, yeah, my I, mom is almost full native. Okay. My dad's a little bit. Gotcha. So my dad never got a check. Oh. My, my mom got the checks. Mm. And then because we were just enough, we got checks as well. Mm -hmm. Wow! So, yeah, are it was you, great. It, yeah. <laughs> I mean, free money, baby. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. But is is the is the worth of the check dependent on how much bloodline no. you? No. no if it's you're a, a member, set, you're a yeah, member. You're a member. It's so wow. interesting. Man. It's very interesting. I love it. It's very equal, interesting. Did, that's amazing that everybody just because you're a member that you get equal to everybody, which I think is fair. Yeah. yeah, yeah shout out! Too. Shout out the Call of Confederated Tribes. I'm a very proud member. I love them and everything that we've done. We're one of the biggest tribes in america and how many are pretty successful how many members i'm not exactly sure but it's it's a good amount yeah. but our our reservation is huge it's extremely beautiful in washington state Do you go visit? I, Have you? I try to go every yeah. year okay. my mom my mom still lives up there oh, and wow. for, for the pandemic the pandemic was oh, hitting wow. and i was like i'm bouncing i'm going to washington oh wow yeah. <laughs> and it was like normal life yeah. it was great yeah <laughs> Well, congrats on that because you guys would Thanks. get a check and you guys would go buy, like you were saying, wood and different things. And yeah. so I guess you saved up for, what was the first camera? Our first camera was this weird, I think it was a JVC. Do you guys remember those weird cameras? It's like a, it was like a, like almost like a Game Boy. And it had like a side thing you could twist yes. around. Yeah, I remember those. Remember those goofy things? Put your little oh, hand, yeah, put yeah, your little yeah, hand yeah. through the little yeah. thing. and Yeah, mm -hmm. it was one of those. So for skating, it was great because you could like look at it and film and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah get Perfect. these angles wow yeah so that was that was the camera you used for the first upload on youtube that we saw no mm. that was a vx1000 you got a vx1000 before oh, okay so this the first was camera early early, early yeah early. yeah the first camera we got was in 1995 gotcha so i was filming 
almost right when I started skating. What happened Amazing. to all that footage, though? Uh, you know what sucks is um, it was on a mini DV tape, and it just, like, disappeared. It's so mm -hmm. strange. So the none worst. of that got uploaded to YouTube Never. or anything? Oh, Never. Okay. And I don't even have a copy of it. There might be one somewhere at my mom's house. I might be able to find one day. But, you know, just through moving and all the different stuff that's happened... I uh, can't find it. My dad might have one in his old stuff, but he passed away and it's kind of hard to find that stuff. Mm. So it's lost in translation. I mean, right let's now. be honest though. That's one <laughs> yeah. beautiful thing about the internet and YouTube and stuff like that is because you put something on there, it's on there forever. It's yeah. on there forever. You could, you could unlist it, you could private it, you could do certain things, you could make it public. But again, it's like a great way to archive stuff as well. Honestly, that's one of my favorite things about it. And the fact that I'm going to be able to be like an elderly man one day and maybe I'll be forgetting things. I could just go back and like, oh, what happened in yeah. 2007? Yeah. Yep. And watch all this stuff. And you're like, oh, yeah, oh, all those memories yeah. are coming back. Holy He's like, crap. oh, man, proof uh, didn't do too well, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fast forward. Okay, 2010. Let's watch yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what's uh, one thing that's really awesome. And, you know, even people who don't want to make money off YouTube, it's like, dude, just upload stuff so you have it there. Like, even just family memories, yeah. anything, it's stuff that's important. Yeah. Wasn't that a good archival place? Wasn't that originally why it was made? Wasn't it like YouTube? It was like someone. It's supposed to be a dating site originally. Was it? Is it that what it was? No. It was a, yeah, really? Raj is right. I think it was a dating site. A dating wow. site? Yeah, you like yeah. upload your videos and people. Really? And they, it quickly changed. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Quickly. Real quick. Because I don't remember that <laughs> at that all. That business model did not work. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think you're right, though. I think Raj. it was a little too I, early. I definitely. Heard about that. <laughs> yeah. First YouTube video ever is this guy, Me at the Zoo. Really? Yeah, it's this guy. Oh, let's here. see it. I got to see this. I've been fascinated. Well, what's the and upload it's only... date? 19 seconds long. Wow. Yeah, what's the upload date? Upload date is 18 <laughs> years ago. So he wanted what? someone to 278 million views. Oh that's my psycho. God. That, that's what he wanted for his dating the thing. Is 11 million 145,000 comments. Wow. wow. The very psycho. first video. That's crazy. Me at the zoo. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> God. Okay, so where do we leave off? Because where we do we the YouTube thing mm -hmm. really? I mean, let, let's just get into that, shall we? When you first started getting monetized, you got the check, hundred bucks or something like that. How old were you at this point? Um, I think it was right around. Let's see, two thousand ten. Right around thirty. Thirty. Yeah. Now that's my question. Mm-hmm. Here we are in the skateboarding world. You did a video of Paul Rodriguez. You did a video. You did two, right? You did the proof one also. Yeah. Uh, you worked for Street League. You After Street League, you did a little f things with Mountain Dew and a few other little companies yeah. too, right? Gatorade. Gatorade. A bunch of stuff. Like That stuff helped a lot. Sure. Yeah. But here we are, 30 years old. Are you starting to like wonder like what the, what is... I'm not... I'm, am I secure yet? Where, where am I going with this? <laughs> So, and how, here's YouTube over here now. I'm monetized. Is this is this is a fork in the road right yeah, now? I was yeah, about to say that. it was a huge fork in the road. But um, you know the the whole thing it happened so seamlessly. Me going from street league and the core skateboard industry to transitioning into YouTube, it was already kind of there for me. You know what I mean? You just so I got, said it right there too, man, because the core industry wasn't on YouTube. Mm -mm. No, and it was frowned upon. Yeah. They, uh, I got a lot of shit from just about everyone. They all thought I was nuts, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I just, uh, <laughs> I, I just had this feeling in my stomach that I always listened to. Mm -hmm. And when you feel that feeling, it's like a fire, you know, sure. you just, you just go for it. For sure. And I just had this feeling it was going to work out. And there was so much potential here to do so much with. And I would try to talk to everyone about it. And they're like, nah, man, I don't see that. You know, mm -hmm. like you should do this. I'm like, no, mm -mm, I'm doing this. Yeah, and I was just very stubborn about it, and just kept going. And uh, you know, my 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 network a deal was really good. Okay, I was very stable through that, and uh, it lasted for like two, three years. You know, that, what happened though did suck, but you know, network a wasn't all bad. It was there were some really cool points about it, but um, that helped me get everything started for the rest of my life. Sure. You know, sure. So it transitioned into that, and uh, 
You know, I, I really wish I could have gotten more of the core industry on board stronger earlier because everyone's channels would be a lot bigger right now yeah. and everyone would be a lot more mm -hmm. have a stronger foundation because yeah. there's a lot of competition now and it's not as easy as it was before. And you gotta, uh, I mean, a lot of the companies nowadays are still not yeah. getting in, in, into bed with YouTube, you mm -hmm. know, which is really bizarre. Yeah. I really, it's... There's certain companies that do. Primitive is is really good at it. They're killing Santa it. Cruz, Santa Cruz, yeah, Santa Cruz. Yeah. killing yeah. it. Um, but there's the companies that just don't. They give all their shit away. Yeah, it's true. Pa Powell Peralta is killing Powell, it too. Powell. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're are, are you? What are you? Team manager for them? Um, I'm basically just helping out with uh, their YouTube. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the special team must work with the YouTube. Yeah, yeah. It has <laughs> to. Dude. It has to. Well, let's keep going on this YouTube <laughs> path right now because okay. like you you wanted to go uh, and people were giving you shit for it and everything mm -hmm. but by the way man like i you just said you tried to get a lot of people involved all the core stuff but you know looking back at it too and you still you, you helped out a lot of kids man you helped out Big a time. lot yep. of people you put Straight a lot up. of people on the map so that's something to be super proud of man i i am very proud of that and uh you know i think the core industry forcing me into that place kind of helped me become that mm -hmm. you know what i mean because a lot of the dudes were either doing their own thing or too busy to work with me or didn't want to work with me so then i had to go out and find new talent so i was constantly at skate parks and just keeping my eye out and you know i started to get a reputation and people would hit me up like hey you want to film some stuff do a video what are your ideas like let's start working on things so uh as time went on that was just kind of like my spot my place and um, I'm really happy that that happened, actually. So that happened organically. Totally like you, organic. Because sometimes when you start a YouTube, because I tell pros all the time, I tell people who come in, I'm like, you got, just start a YouTube channel. Yeah. Like, you don't have to vlog. You don't have to be one of those these guys. Hey, I'm a... You could upload footage. You could up... I mean, you're uploading on Instagram, right? You're putting clips out Same there, thing. right? Like, there's a whole universe that lives on YouTube. You're mm -hmm. missing out on a huge audience. Probably the biggest one, too. Probably yeah. the biggest. Yeah. And they're very committed and they're great fans and they love us. And yeah. I do sure. believe that you can actually build a solid community on YouTube. I don't think you could do that on Instagram or TikTok or any of these other places. It's, it's not really, the same. Mm -hmm. It's not the same, man. At all. Different, yeah. yeah. Everyone thing is like their own universe. Yeah. Completely did, separate. Did you have a schedule back then when you started? Like when you started making money, did you be like, cool, I need to post every day or every other couple days or every monday or whatever it was at that time i uh you know all, all the clips the length didn't matter you know i've been through the whole gamut of the different changes in youtube mm -hmm. so my my way to do it was i would just call them clips of the day that's just, right yeah you know clips of, the day, yeah. clips of the day yeah and they would just be like almost like an instagram clip is now just a real short clip kind of show everyone like one trick and those did really well for a long time but then as YouTube started to change, you know, the links started to increase and everything just shifted. So I've had to evolve and try so many different ideas throughout the years. And if you go through my old videos, you can watch the evolution yeah. of how it all changes, yeah. you know, which is very fascinating. And, you know, I talk to all the new YouTubers now all the time about it. I'm like, just get ready for change. Mm -hmm. Know that this is a thing. Know you're going to burn out. <laughs> just when you burn out just take a break yeah it's not a big deal yeah. it's not the end of the world if you come back it's different you gotta start something new yeah. <laughs> was, you, was there a certain type True. a time in youtube that you that you that you love the most like um I know that's a weird question maybe but maybe was there a time where you're like <laughs> oh man this is this is my shit right here. I think it's all for when all different the advertisers were, yeah. were, were yeah. pumping money. Yeah. <laughs> He's seen some money coming in. Yeah, like, loving this right now. Yeah. Well, it seemed like it was. I mean, you're posting like shorter clips back then, and yeah. can you make money on stuff like that now? Not as much. Yeah. No, like the long form content is where it's at. If you can make a longer video and it's engaging, yeah. you can place more ads on it so you make more money. And I believe that, so. Google, that, that YouTube wants those out there because they make more money as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they keep people on their website. Right. So if you have a powerful piece that keeps them trapped watching it, then they're like, oh, push that, yeah. get it out there. Like so watch, your guys' show, it's watch, perfect. Well, watch time is very interesting because here's the thing. Sorry to no, hold, no, that no, thought, hold that thought, hold that thought. Because like we have a two hour show plus, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the the normal watch time on that is n not, you know, maybe thirty five minutes. Yeah, people come back, they go, they go away, they come back, they go away, they come back, and then so 
you know, it's interesting because it's on a 15 minute video, a, wa- a watch time of 10 minutes is astronomical. Huge. It's huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So our gap is a little different. It's oh, a little it is. different for like a two hour show. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, no. So I was going off like, what's the sweet spot based on like the, the timing of a video? So, like, you're just saying, like, is, is it 10 minutes or is it 30 minutes or even longer? You know what I mean? Like, what's the where you know, like, this is going to, you know, maximize from ad space or whatever it may be. Is there like a specific time? Or are you even thinking about all that? I've talked to a lot of different people. And for me personally, I just try to make a video over eight minutes, which is very hard. Putting you know? one ad in there? Well, no, because after eight minutes, then you can place ads wherever you want. I know, but I'm saying like how many ads, you don't want to oversaturate it with ads because well, then your shit just gets, people get pissed off. Well, the leave, thing, right? well, yeah. well, well, the thing also is though, is that YouTube doesn't show every ad you place. Oh, mm. interesting. So you place the ads and they're just going to show like when they think they should anyway. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. like, they, yeah. they want the people to watch the video. Yeah. Like, We're going to give you an opportunity to place them somewhere, but we yeah. might not be <laughs> playing them there. <laughs> okay, but let's just, let's, let, for, for you have a nine minute video mm-hmm. where how many ads you place it in there um it depends but you know i tend to go like every two or three minutes just really? to see now have yeah. you ever gotten people in the comments saying oh man i keep getting these ads i think in the beginning when they would just show them when you wanted yes they would say that but i so, never get comments anymore about that so before. you're telling me and our audience if I'm placing every two minutes for an ad break, I don't know about your guys' videos. Cause... No, no, but, but no, but listen <laughs> to this. Yeah. I mean, we're not going to place two ad, that two minutes. That's a little much. That would be but insane. You have a nine minute video. You place an ad every two to three minutes. Let's just say mm-hmm. two, four, six, eight. So four ads, mm-hmm. right? Now those ads may not be filled. Exactly. So you may only get one ad mm-hmm. being played. Or you might get all four being played. Yeah. You don't. You just. Uh, it's a crapshoot. That's a crap what you're shoot, saying, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So you don't even know. No. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, you're trying to maximize. I mean, obviously, you're trying to maximize. You work hard, man. You yeah. should. Yeah, it's interesting because I don't want to. What for us? We we put our ads every what thirty minutes or every something thirty like minutes. That. So. Which I'm sure to they play minutes. all those. I don't you know. know. What I, mean? I right. don't know. But yeah. I, I don't want to oversaturate and make. It's just a, 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 an unwatchable. For yeah. sure. You'd like a detour. Like, ah, you know what? I'm good. Like another ad? Yeah. But at the same time, I, I look at a channel like yours. I'm like, you work hard. You deserve that. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. we work hard. Maybe we deserve that too, you know? Mm-hmm. But people out there, they don't realize, you know, they just think, oh, another ad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that That's is. why you got to get the premium. I have that. Me too. That's and why I don't know how many <laughs> ads. I watch yeah. a Nigel video and I get no ads. No how ads. <laughs> how does that work though? Do you st- you s- you still get? Yeah, you get. He gets premium. Ad. Yeah, we get paid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if someone watches it through premium, we make some money. Yeah, there I'm not go. sure how comparable it is, but it's we, probably not we even, still get it's paid. It's probably not even that comparable. Yeah, but if you're if you're trying to pay <laughs> yeah. for premium and you you don't want ads, how's that? What is that? I don't get it. Like, how are they? St- you still seeing the ad if you're. No, 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 you're no, not. You're, you're not. not. But he's, that. but he's yeah. still getting a piece of that person's uh, sub- yeah. subscription. Oh, uh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That is true. Anyone that does not have YouTube Premium, please get it. It is worth it. <laughs> or if it, you don't it, have YouTube Premium, and you love the guy's content or girl's content you're watching, watch the whole commercial. Yes. Mm. Because then mm. you get the maximum. The it's actually you know you get paid by. You know, if, if they skip the ad in five seconds, you get way less money. Way less. Uh, How much is so premium? It really does help us a lot. It just got raised. I think, 10 it's, bucks? Like, I think it's no, I think it's like bucks? 18, 19 bucks Good now. Wow. Wow. That I just wow. got notified. It was like twelve ninety nine, I think, or eleven ninety nine. Yeah, I and remember it was, twelve ninety nine. I think I got an email saying it was eighteen ninety nine. Now what does that come <laughs> with besides like no ads? Uh you could on your phone, I know it sounds silly, but like you could like like right now I could just play it and it would out loud and my phone's like you could turn your phone off. I could turn my phone, not off, but like. Yeah, you know, I mean, you could like. Yeah, yeah, click the power sh- button. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, turn it. Not and, it'll, and it'll still keep playing. It'll yeah. play the audio. You can out listen loud. to music. You can listen to music and stuff like that out loud instead of like having the app open all the time, okay. like on the screen. And what else? Uh, you can it, download it, videos in high quality. That's true. Okay. I mean, it cooks you dinner. At night. Yeah, it tells you when. eighteen dollars, well, hey. bro. Eighteen dollars is a that's a big deal, bro. But so is Netflix. So is and here's the thing, yeah, though. Netflix I, is cheaper than that. Well, dude, I'm on I'm on YouTube all the time. I'm a YouTube guy. Right. I have it on my Apple TV. I guess for the people that are very into YouTube, they can make that make sense. There's I a can't lot of make people like that too. If sense. I had to watch every commercial, I oh, would go man. crazy. I would jump off my balcony because like it's just 
It is so much. So I, watch you. <laughs> I watch you. I watch you. I popped him off. Oh, fuck this. <laughs> I'm on, the, listen, jumps off I'm the, on the first floor, too. I ain't getting a little ankle sprain. But, you know, it's um, it's, it's a lot. I, I watch YouTube all the time. Yeah. I'm a YouTube guy. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. constantly on YouTube. So it makes sense for you. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I'm down to pay for it. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. But you, you don't watch it's YouTube. So I don't. Not, I, not as much as... I, if I, if I was watching it like you guys, I'd probably entertain it. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I got an Apple TV. I got f- mad other subscriptions that I'm trying to pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go back to oh, yeah. hooking. Uh, you know, finding the, finding the talent for these you know up and coming kids and stuff like that, and giving them a platform to put their parts on and, mm-hmm. and your whatever you were doing with them, um, skate wise. Um, well, in the beginning, you know, it was real easy because clips of the day, you just meet up with someone, film one clip, Yeah. you know, oh, woo, there you go, yeah. you know, and get some views, they're hyped. But as time went on, you know, I had to like start evolving that, doing like games of skate or like mm. this person kills this skate park or, you know, just a lot of different things. You're like, thinking of more content, just different stuff. Yeah, yeah, different styles, different things, stuff that works better. You're still putting out one views. video a day? at this point um i did that probably for like six months to a year and then it started to get really hard and then i started to slow down in that and just kind of figure out ideas that i wanted to do and you know because in that time it's like you weren't really sure how often you could upload you know if you still uploaded too much then videos didn't get viewed Mm. you know so it's still Mm -hmm. like that today it's like you got to figure out a sweet spot of like how many you should upload a week right right so that's what i was going to ask like what is did that benefit you like doing the like one a day for know? then? Yeah. And yeah. like how the content was, it worked really well. All right. those videos got lots of views, mm-hmm. but as time started to change and vlogging came into uh, the picture that changed everything. Mm-hmm. Cause yeah. then people wanted to know who I was, you know, and who these skaters were and you know how we are as skaters or how we were anyway, we didn't really like talking to the camera or telling our stories or what was happening or, you know, it was very awkward and hard at first. And it took a lot of time to kind of like find skaters who were willing to do it and see all of us grow as a community and people, period. Now it's like you can point a phone or camera at just about anyone and they're like, oh, I'm vlogging. Okay, yeah, what's up? Hey, how's it going? You know, it's like a very natural normal. thing. Wait, your it's audience totally was requesting that? Yes. Okay. Like a lot of people started asking for vlogs and days in the life and like who we were and behind the scenes. and That's where YouTube you know. was going at the time as well. Yes. Mm going the vlog route Mm -hmm. you know and you happily i mean maybe not happily but you did it you started to vlog you started to put yourself out there in the beginning it was uh really hard because at that time i was still shooting with like big heavy cameras and to do a vlog you have to shoot all damn day yeah with a five to ten pound camera it was pointed at you Mm -hmm. i pointed at me or whoever following them filming every little thing it was a nightmare (laughs) <laughs> so, you know, I started to try and do it with GoPros and smaller cameras and the quality wasn't there yet. So they didn't really come out that well. I wasn't really happy with them. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, back then at that time, we were starting to film with our phones and I was like, you know, the iPhone 7 or 5 or whatever it was is way back. And I'd look at it and be like, no, nope, it's not ready yet. Seriously. Can't do it. Right. So I didn't start using my phone for a while. You were waiting. I was waiting. You knew. I knew. I did. I did. Very early on. Like iPhone 4, I was like, it's almost there, but not quite yet. You know, and right around, it was the iPhone 7. That's what it was. That phone came out and I started looking at it and I kept this very secret for years. I did not tell anyone I was shooting on my phone. Hmm. Unless they saw you out in the wild shooting on your phone. No, even then they're like, oh, when are you going to pull your camera out and start filming? Like, oh, I'm not doing that today. Mm. And would, I just kept it secret. Get, really? Yeah. But then a YouTube video would come out. <laughs> it wouldn't matter. They wouldn't they, they believe it. Know. They wouldn't believe it. <laughs> they just wouldn't believe it. Like, how could you be making these amazing videos why, on your phone? Why did you want to keep it a secret? Because I think it's smarter for us to have secrets as creators and who we are. And Magician never reveals a secret. <laughs> yeah. I got yeah. I got lots of them, and they are not coming out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot smarter for us. Well, you I think know? at the end of the day, too, like you want to, you know. Um, give people you you want to be there for people that want to do it right you yeah but at the same time like you every magician has his secrets it's you very know? important for us and even like back in the day uh filming for the 118 videos and all that back then like i had a name called secret squirrel yeah i've always had my secrets no doubt mm-hmm. like me and paul would go out and film tricks and not tell anyone 
And they'd be like, oh, what did they do? What did they do? What did they do? And me They're and Paul still... are like, we're not telling anyone nothing. Wait, do you know what SHS <laughs> yeah, stands for? No. <laughs> I was about to say, they still got secrets. I wasn't that. part of it, so they wouldn't tell they me. Wouldn't tell you? <laughs> no. We're going we're gonna to get Paul wasted here. Yeah. We're going to get it out of here. Yeah. For those that don't know, they had a little crew at SHS, and they will not say what that means. Yeah. We're, we're, we're dying to know. Yeah, we're, me and Paul. figure it out sooner. Me and Paul definitely got into our secrets, and we still have them. And yeah. uh, I think yeah. it's fun. You know, like I don't tell anyone my middle name. Okay. It's a secret. Okay. So it's just something that's weird and goofy, and Jeff. I don't know why. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Nigel, Jeff, Alex. So iPhone 7 comes out. Boom, that's when you made the switch. You don't tell that's, anybody. You're I don't filming. Tell no one. People will catch on sooner or later, right? It you, took years. Yeah. It took until recently. I started to like, you know, people finally started catching on. And now a handful of people will use their phones. But typically it's like most people don't have the 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 proper training and filming period. You know, it's like when you look at your phone, you have to treat it like it's a red camera. You can't just be like, oh, yeah, I'm filming my phone. It's going to be a great YouTube video. Yeah, sure. this is going to be awesome. No, yeah, it's not going to be like that. You got to be a little bit more. You got to know what you're doing. <laughs> if you want, I mean, anybody could film, but you got to know what you're doing to make it look right. Well, exactly. And plus editing, too. Yeah. Like yeah. a lot of people can't edit well or they try to edit and it just doesn't come it's, out as well. As it's it. very editing is meticulous. And uh, it's it's not for me. It's not really. I mean, it's become more fun again. Mm -hmm. But you know, I have my know how to make it fun again. But um, it's not really that fun. Right. Just, it's not. <laughs> I, mean, I hate editing. Man. It's, tedi it's very tedious. So you're filming these kids now. Now let me ask you a question. Let me bring it back really quickly because cool. like we, you know, YouTube's up and down with the algorithms and trying to keep up and it's changed it, so many times. It's a grind. You have to really kind of figure it out. And you know, it's like, it sucks. It sucks when all of a sudden you're spiking and everything's going well. And then you're dipping and you start questioning <laughs> yourself. You're like, is this going right? What are we doing? How can I make this better? Blah, 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 blah. But it, sometimes it's just the algorithm needs to work itself out as well too. Cause they're always dialing it in. Yeah. Um, does that play a part in like mental health as well to try to like figure out like I'm the one that's, I'm the problem. Yeah. Not YouTube. I'm the problem. I've gone crazy quite a few times trying to think of that and uh you know got depressed mm -hmm. and didn't know why a certain video would do well and another one wouldn't and you know there's so many different factors that have to do with why one video does well and one doesn't and you know we just went through a big weekend with x games right sure so you have to be aware when something big is uploading right because if something big's uploading that's going to take all those views. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Or is it going to add to the views? It can and it can't. So it's it's a crapshoot. It's a gamble. The I, best for me is when no one's uploading nothing. Really? For me, for sure. Here's if the thing. no one's uploading anything good and I drop some heat, mm -hmm. boom, it goes. It After blows up. After four years, I have, I have a segment called I'm Glad I'm Not Me on my YouTube channel. Yeah. And uh, me and Tim, Tim Olson do it. And um, I... We filmed one. It's Elliot Sloan's Sloan Yard Mega Ramp thing, and we're just like, "Oh, we'll put it out now because X Games is happening, mm -hmm. and it's probably going to drive traffic because people are searching for X Games." Yeah, and not a, a, not uploading a video for four years on my YouTube channel. I mean, I think it's at like fifty k right yeah, now. Yeah, it did great. So, but that but was that, tied into X Games. It right? is tied into X Games. Mm, yeah, right. But you're saying that that wouldn't do well for you. <laughs> but what if but it's my not... stuff wasn't tied into Exa X Games? Exactly. <laughs> Right. If he's oh, posting like a random oh, thing, if, it, if it's yeah. tied into what's going big to a degree, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you were at X Games, you that would be the. I'll, I'll it plant. could. It'd have to be a really good piece, though. Still, okay. Interesting. like you can't just go there and film some BS and expect it to blow up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. Like, but you don't do that. No, your I try not to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I try to focus on each piece and make sure that it's quality, and you know, I try to put everything up, and it all is something I would want to watch again. You right. Know, I don't want to put up something and I'm like, oh, that was crap. Right. You know, it's, you want to be proud of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, as an artist and someone who's trying to build something that's a legacy, I think that's very important for us. You know, I don't just try to regurgitate or put up something that I'm not hyped on. You know, I'm I'm definitely guilty of it in the past when I wasn't as solid as a human or I was going through something mentally or physically or whatever it was. But you know, when you're in a good spot, 
you should put that time in and wait, even if you have to wait to get enough good content and put out something that you are proud of, yeah. you know? Sure. And, and that being said too, is that for me now personally, it's like when I upload something, I don't get bummed if the video doesn't do well. Okay. I'm like, I know this video is good. I like it. It's going to do what it does. Mm. And sometimes I don't look at the views. Don't look at the comments. Don't look at the likes. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I just let it ride. Okay. And you know, I'll okay. come back and look at it and I'm like, oh, that one did great. Cool. I'm happy. Right. Sometimes I look back and I'm like, that video did horrible. But I still love it. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was right. a good video. <laughs> yeah. What's you what, what's your upload schedule right now? What do you um, do? right now I'm doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay. And uh, I'm skipping the weekends because right now Battle of the Barracks is going on. So I think uploading during the weekend they're gonna suck all the views out so i don't upload on saturday or sunday you know we're, we're in such a niche market so to speak we are that's and there is a ceiling to it too i talk about it all the time on the show but um yes i could see what you're saying the battle of the barracks is sucking the views out there because those on the are, weekends especially for sure for yeah. sure crazy and yeah i talked to dan corrigan and he uploads a video every day every day, day. Yeah. Which I think is nuts. Yeah. I think, that he's, is out, nuts. I think he's out of his mind. It's very, very hard to do that. But Dan has had a ton of success, and I'm super proud of what he's accomplished in such a short period of time. He's so driven. And, uh, you know, me and Andy were trying to talk to him about doing it for a while. Mm -hmm. But he's a very smart person, Dan is. He's all into strategy, he's all about chess. So I think he watched us and everything that everyone did mm. and he figured it out way before he started. And then he's like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And, and he I executed it perfectly. When I spoke to him about it too, he was like, I've tried everything. I've tried one day a week. I've tried three days a week. I've tried four days. I've tried every, but every day is my sweet spot mm -hmm. and that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. You know, I'm like, damn, you are crazy, motherfucker, bro. It's, uh, does he edit? He doesn't do a lot of editing those videos, does he? He kind of films off the hip and just kind of puts it out there. I mean, it seems like he just has the rhythm of doing it. Like, he just goes out and films, puts it out, maybe cuts some stuff here and there. Sure. But it's all... He, he edits them, but I think he's just very, very good at knowing what he's going to say. Because a lot of his videos are dialogue, and he's a master at it. Okay. So he knows how to tell a story and get the skating in there. And, like, he's just very good at producing his content. And uh, I think it's amazing what he's accomplished. And, you know, he has a huge fan base now, and he did it so fast. How long has he been very, doing it, you think? Uh, two years. Wow. wow. In a nuts. very competitive environment. Yeah. And he's killing it. That's amazing. So I'm very happy he's part of the Pal Peralta crew. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> we're all working together because yeah. it makes all of our lives easier when there's more people killing it. For sure. I could talk you can lean it. on for, like, advice. But obviously, you've been in this game for a while. They'd be leaning on you. Well, we, we, we <laughs> lean on each other. Right. You know, yeah. Dan's helped me quite a bit, too. I mean, you know, yeah, because, uh, you know, I'm not as good at talking in front of the camera as he is or, like, explaining things. And I've learned a lot from him. Right. So, uh, you know, there's always things you can learn from everyone. We should always be um, a a student, never a master. Right. That's a very important thing that I try to apply to myself all the time. And um, always going back to that humble point of view of like looking at someone new coming up and what they're doing and figuring out what they're doing and if you can implement anything they're doing into what you're doing, it's great. You know, sure. when you become too rigid and don't want to change, then you're probably not going to last very long. <laughs> Especially in an ever-changing place like YouTube, you have to kind of take everybody's kind of insight you and, have to and, and if you're smart your yeah if you're yeah. smart one thing i want to know because uh, i want to dive more into your and paul rodriguez's uh relationship but cool. one thing that i want to talk to you about right now is uh people have this misconception sometimes about youtube and the monetization that happens there and some people think you know people are they don't even know anything about the monetization and other <laughs> other people think that it's like you know you're a, a millionaire right you yeah. know you get a hundred thousand dollars a month or whatever has anybody wanted to film with you but get paid oh yeah really well i mean i get hit up about it all the time you know people hit me up and like oh how much you paying these guys to film like what's going on and you know what i mean and Sometimes if a video is sponsored or like, you know, when I was doing videos for Network A, I had a budget to pay guys, you know, or if, you know, a video does insanely well, yeah, I'll pay him. 
but really yeah typically it's like they 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 don't make they probably make about enough money for me to go out and film them Mm -hmm. and for me to pay my bills that day right yeah yeah so you know not too often do the videos like just boom you know because you guys know too you guys are running the same hustle basically it's Mm -hmm. like it's not as easy as everyone thinks Mm -hmm. you know there's you you gotta get like a million views to make a lot of money right and that doesn't happen very often in skateboarding no no so i i it's it's and it's also hard to break it down too Mm because i can go on your channel and look and see oh this one got this many views this one has this one oh this one and you could kind of come up with a number in your head but it's a made-up number because Mm -hmm. you you we could be doing the exact same thing your cpm you know, the cost per thousand views that you get, your CPM could be way different than yeah. my CPM. It's really bizarre how that works. And who knows how the hell they even come up with that number. Cause you could be getting like $12 per thousand views and I could be getting like $8, you know? So it's like really <laughs> bizarre. The average is four. The average is four. That's what, yeah. that's what you on your channel. <laughs> no, or that, just in that's, general. that's just the general average is $4. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> ours is like 40. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're making a lot nah, of money. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I know this is maybe an obvious, <laughs> but dumb question. I don't know. How do they even, how do they figure out that's who what gets we, what? We don't know. Like yeah. why? We There's don't know. no, okay. Yeah. Family friendly content for sure. No cussing. Yeah. All that stuff. That matters probably bumps that up a little bit because they can they can push it out to a wider audience uh-huh. i try not to cuss i try not to show anything that's like you know yeah. above pg-13 or mm-hmm. anything like that i try to keep it all pretty pretty family friendly yeah. you know because right. you know i have a lot of kid viewers i have a lot of like parents watching with their kids you know mm-hmm. i want to make sure that everyone can watch my videos and no one gets offended it's smart you know occasionally some cuss words will slip through there i'm really trying not to cuss for you guys you know i want to keep appreciate it that, clean man. thank right. you dude we're you gonna know? get a best cpm ever <laughs> yeah <this> <laughs> wholesome <laughs> yeah i want to keep everyone watching it and you know i don't want anyone to be like oh he said the f-bomb yeah, got yeah. turned off little johnny can't be learning those words right <laughs> it's his, man. little johnny they are out there they are they are they are well better learning from us than uh, anybody hey, else out there. Yeah, you know what i mean <laughs> but so people have been like hey i'm down to go out and film with you how much you're gonna pay me there's been a couple but not really that okay. much okay. not okay. really That's funny. you know I, th- I think they all understand <laughs> I, th- I think <laughs> It's the truth, though. You yeah. know, there are, you know. I mean, after the fact, if that thing goes nuts, I promise to break you off a little something. If I get 10 million views, we'll, we'll break you off. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's so what I'm saying. I, I, think, I think in after general. The fa- after the fact, but not before. Yeah. Back me up on this, or maybe mm-hmm. you could even have a different uh, opinion of this. Like, maybe for a million views, we're looking, and it's it's rough estimate, but like four grand. It could be, yeah. But it. Could, it could be, be a lot more. It could be a lot more. Could be a lot less. Right. That's so the, it's the pretty crazy. It, <laughs> Let me use this as an example. So Tyshawn just ollied the, the car we I think we all saw the other day, yeah. right? You upload that and it's whatever, like 20 seconds, right? Mm-hmm. That thing gets 10 million views in a matter of 48 hours. Are we talking about a YouTube short or actually like wherever the- wherever you feel that that would go? Mm-hmm. A YouTube I, short would not make a lot of money. Yeah, not like two hundred bucks. Okay. Yeah. yeah, because because it's too short. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube shorts, they, those are the ones that will get forty million views. We have a Tony Hawk video okay. that got it's it's way past thirty million. Views. I remember we talked about this, <laughs> and I we only got paid like a couple hundred bucks for that thing. You know, if we got four. We'd be this in is where tax, it gets confusing. We'd be in a new tax bracket <laughs> if that like thing a, got 50, 30 million views on, the, on, on the our regular, channel right, right now. Right. I'd be wearing a gold watch. <laughs> I'd, be just, I'd be paying my car gold. You know what I'm saying? I'd have a little diamond in my tooth. You know what I mean? So 40 million uh, views would get... I mean, what's 40 million... Listen, as a conservative <laughs> thing, let's, times 4,000. Four. Oh, what's okay. 40 million times 10,000? Times 4. Times 4,000. 4, 40 times 4, uh, anybody 16 math? something. Yes, yeah, I, I don't know. Six, not 16. Hun, no, 160,000. 160,000. I don't know. I'm, I'm, what? Come on, guys. Yeah, higher than that? Come, Come on, on guys. plead the fifth on, on this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> and this is just. I can't a, remember. What did you say? Was? This well, is just I an estimate. <laughs> okay. I heard like four numbers and I didn't 40, know. 40, oh, hold on, hold on. Okay. 40 million <laughs> times. 4, no, 000. is it times 4,000? 40 million times 4,000? I'm 4, pleading 000? the fifth. Oh, you're right. You're right. Uh, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. 1.6 E11. What the fuck does one that po- mean? 1.6 <laughs> million. 
million? No, that's <laughs> million. not good. That's, 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 that's 160,000. Yeah, that's what I think it's 160,000. So, so 40 million. <laughs> That's just for one sixty thousand. That's amazing. Just think about Mr. Beast, man. Yeah. He's getting seventy-five million views. He's getting no. I don't think that's right. I think it's one point six million. Really? Yeah. Wow. For just for, for forty million views on regular wow, YouTube. That's wow. Psychopath. Damn. That's a lot. That's a lot of views, though. Million. It's a lot of views. Yeah, that's wait, a wait, lot wait. Of so views. how do they monetize that? Based on like, so say for instance, you didn't get to that number uh, four months from then. You know what I mean? Not in a matter of a month. Right. You got this. You it got this in a matter up. of like... It all adds up. I mean, the beauty of YouTube is you're making money on that video forever. Right. Okay. So one month it could get, uh, you know, a thousand views. Right. The next month it could go viral. Okay. And it could just take off. And then ma later down the line, you could still be getting residuals from it. Crazy. It's a, it's a weird world, man. It's a weird yeah. world. So you're still getting paid from videos back in the day? Yeah. Not, wow. not a whole lot. Right. But it all adds up. It I does. Have, I have yeah. almost 3,000 videos. Wow. So, and they all trickle in a couple cents. <laughs> <laughs> but 3,000 videos 3, 000, times a couple cents. No, but yeah. three, <laughs> listen, um, listen, imagine you have 3,000 videos, even if, if even if each video made a dollar that month. Oh that's my three God. grand. Yeah. I wish <laughs> that every video made a dollar. So it's not, it is, is, is it's it, like cents. Is, is it hey. as lucrative as it once was, or is it like tougher now for you to make money? Um, it depends on how much I work. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. And I like making my videos now a lot. And it's not very hard, but I'm in a very good place mentally, physically, and I like my workflow. I could potentially bang out five videos a week if I'm really driven. You know, I could start getting on that Dan Corrigan level. <sighs> But uh, I just don't want to do that. <laughs> you right. know, what, right. I always hear Chris talking about it, and I, I love seeing this evolve. But like uh -huh. cover pages, thumbnails. Oh, thumbnails. Oh my god, they're so important. What is there anything that that you do personally that thinks I that just, works? Think that I works? just, I just well, try to capture a very catching thumbnail that has good contrast or just a good background, not too much going on. And that tells and shows what's really in the video. You don't want it to be too clickbaity. You don't want your fans to be discouraged. You want to put something in there that is <laughs> really in there. I saw <laughs> yeah. that. That just went up today. We should watch that. That's a perfect example. <laughs> Christopher Hyatt Christopher. gets popsicle. <laughs> yeah. Credit carded right there. Now like, you ah. ditched. You ditched the 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 verbiage on there. You ditched uh, the putting the words on the thumbnail. Yeah. I, well, I go back and forth. You know. I'll, I mean, very I'll bounce rarely around. though. Come on. Look. Yeah. At, well, not, okay. It's listen, been a Venice, while. Local. Yeah. But you used to have your own font. You used to have everything. I mean, you used to, every video. Yeah. That's how it was kind of, you knew it was a, an NKA video. Yeah. Was that, that, yeah. that, that font. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm like all about the evolution, you know, even like the way I dress, the Fair way enough. I do everything. I like to still be a normal human. You Fair know? enough. I don't yeah. want to like always look exactly the same. You know, like some of the other YouTubers like Andy Schrock mm -hmm. always wears a red shirt. I would He's like a video game character at yes, this point. You right. know what I mean? For me, I'm not going to do that to myself. Yeah. You know, I, I like to go out in public and not be recognized. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of the times when I'm out in public, the only way people recognize me is they'll hear my voice and then they'll run up to me like, oh, Nigel, it's you. What's up, dude? And, you know, that's yeah. fun. That's cool. Like, I just got recognized walking at the beach and they didn't even know who I was until they heard my voice. Oh, wow. And they ran up and my mom's like, what was that about? I was like, oh, mom, I'm, I'm famous. You're my mom. <laughs> famous, mom. Yeah. Come on, what's up, mom? And my niece too. My niece was like, why did they come up to you? Yeah. You know, I was like, oh yeah, I'm famous. <laughs> <laughs> These are the, the font that I was talking about. Yeah. That, that was what made it in, in KV. But I, yeah. I, fair enough, you know, I mean, the evolution is 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 good. and the For, the for me, it's stuff, fun, for sure. you know, and, and I embrace change Damn. instead of, you know, getting stuck and you know it. that's not going to make or break your video you know what I'm saying? if i like, change the font no but yeah. the thumbnail is very important like right. like someone's face who's noticeable like i mean andy's face for sure it's mm -hmm. like you know you see andy's face on a video it's they're like oh it's andy yeah i'm gonna watch yeah, that I'm clicking, yeah. you know what i mean but like if it's a good skate trick it is pretty tough to get a good skate trick thumbnail a lot of the times you know because mm -hmm. you got to get it and you got to have the background not too crazy and it's got to be it's got to be perfect. Unless yeah, you're popsicle you know? in your board. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing. That video is doing pretty good right now. <laughs> you Chris, see Chris popsicles in, you're like, you're like, that was perfect. Thank I already you. knew. I already knew. I already knew when it happened. Yeah. The only thing, though, is like when that happened, I was very concerned for Chris. Yeah. You know, I kept filming, but I was like, dude, are you okay? And he got up. I, he walked around. You can see it in the video. He's okay. And, uh, you know, 
I was happy to put it in the video because he was okay. <laughs> if he got really hurt, I probably wouldn't have done yeah, that. Yeah, you know what I yeah. mean. You have I, to run it by him and be like, "Yeah, dude, is this go? Is this okay? Like, yeah. I don't want to put you out there." But. Yeah, but you know, for for YouTube, you know, and, and like Jackass and Jackass is part of skateboarding. That's kind of like a Jackass moment for sure. Know? And he's fine. <laughs> Good. Glad um, to know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I, we talked about it too because the board landed. So it was like the big flat part of his old school board because he skates old school boards. Yeah. What if he would have landed the flat part down oh, and he landed yeah. on the point? Yeah, 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 yeah. He would not have been okay. We would have been no, going to the ER. Yeah, he no. would have been bleeding. He would have been done. That so is thank not... God that didn't happen. Jeez, dude. No. Yeah. <laughs> Because that would have been a hell of a thumbnail, anywhere. though. It would have oh, been a hell of a thumbnail. I would not have put that out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> if someone gets seriously hurt, like I don't. It's it's just too much, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel. Yeah, you. I'd be like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's some good. That's some good clicks right there. Right oh my now. God. That's some good clicks right now. Uh -huh. Have you talked to Andy Schrock about anything YouTube related? Because I think his story is fascinating. Yes. Of what he's done in the YouTube universe. It's incredible what he did. It's crazy. You know what I mean? I'm super hyped for him and everyone that's associated with him because, uh, you know, they took the YouTube route and, uh, you know, kind of showed everyone in skateboarding. It's like, hey, we're a no, no one knows who we are except through YouTube. And, and they're probably selling the most boards yeah. out of all, every company. They were. Yeah, for a long yeah, time. yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Dude, I saw a video pop up this weekend. It was like 10 years of doing the uh, Revive. Revive. Yeah. I didn't know it was called Reven Revenge at first. Yes, it was. But I was like, the so way they, they were put doing it, that before. Yeah. 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 But yeah. the way they he put it out, it looked like it was like the end of an era. Mm. Did you watch the video by chance? No. It was like the sad the music. Title, yeah, that was the like title. Like it was fun. Or yeah, something. yeah. Oh, and man. I was like, "What's happening here?" And then I was like, "Oh," and I didn't want to be one of those guys that's like, "Wait, is this over?" You know, people like don't oh, yeah. they don't listen or watch the video. That's smart. They, yeah, but he they, got everyone to watch the whole thing. I watched it. Though, I was <laughs> one of the last videos I've seen for him. For I was like, "Whoa!" I watched the whole thing. <laughs> Just and like, oh no, we're still going. I was yeah. like, "Oh, okay, never mind." <laughs> yeah. but, just but kidding it, I was like that's awesome it's fascinating yeah. what, he, what they've accomplished it is. in yeah. that time of just and you're, you're right it's like they, they literally showed the skateboarding world like this is what we did we started filming YouTube videos I mean they are for kind of like beginner skaters K kids get, yes. kids are getting in they're, they're learning about skateboarding through Braille and through Andy Schrock and through Revive and then they're going on to find their favorite skater yeah. and, and yeah. They, they're an buying evolution. their Hundred percent. They're yeah. and they know that they they're the the gateway company, right? right? They yep. they they supply them, but they made a killing, mm -hmm. and they so they said, hey, we make YouTube videos. Oh, listen, people want to buy our stuff. We make a, a company. We hey, we made a skate park. Like the <laughs> evolution of that, and they're still it's fascinating. It. It's, it's fascinating. fascinating. I would love yeah. to talk to Andy Schrock about yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, I hopefully hopefully he comes in one day because I know you guys have talked about it before. Yeah, you know, and uh, Andy's a great dude. I've hung out with him a bunch of times. Like we've helped each other over the years. Sick. You know, so you I've, have had discussions with him. About oh YouTube. yeah, Good. we okay. talk all the time. Pros would come in here and we'd be like, "Hey, have you heard of Andy Schrock?" They'd be like, "No, who's that?" Like <laughs> yeah. nobody knew about this whole other universe, yeah. right? Yeah. YouTubers, quote unquote, I feel like sometimes they are grasping at straws. They're trying mm. to figure out what works, what doesn't, and there's nothing wrong with experimenting. I think it's a lot of that. You yeah. know, you want to find your niche or your crew of people you work with or if you can work with everyone because a lot of guys won't work with certain YouTubers or certain people or certain groups. And that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it is how it is, you know. So uh, I think experimenting is a very important thing and figuring out what works for you, what kind of videos you like to do, what kind of videos your audience wants to see. You know, because uh, with, with Braille, once they started doing the videos of skating all the crazy stuff, that's what everyone wants to see now. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so it's hard for them to kind of branch out of that. Yeah. So for me, I, I realized what kind of they did and what happened with them. I was like, I kind of just want to do the videos I want to do, how I want to do them. And whoever watches them, watches them. And if I work with the right people, they'll do well. Right. You know what I mean? I didn't really want to, to make something or try to do something to go viral if it wasn't something I wanted to do long term. You know what I mean? Because then you get kind of pigeonholed mm -hmm. into doing that. Yeah. 
I was just so. about to say too, you know, you look at a Braille or an Andy Schrock and they are really kind of like centered around, you know, the, the youth, right? Mm-hmm. So those youth get older. So their demographic grows up. And then, like I said before, they kind of move on to Evolve. a girl or chocolate or a zero or a Jamie Thomas fan. And they always have to consistently try to get new viewers. Yep. Like they got to bring, they got, which is kind of true for every YouTube channel, right? Everybody. It's like, yeah. look at the biggest guy in the in PewDiePie, right? It's like mm-hmm. he has his fan base, but now his whole fan base has, has grown up. Yep. And so he's got to continuously try to get more <laughs> people. You have to keep the new subscribers coming in, the new audience. You it, have to keep recreating yourself or changing what you do. You have to, yeah, you got to grow. That's just the way it is. It's a never ending process. And for me, I've always embraced change and growing. So Mm -hmm. it's not that big of a deal. (laughs) But for some people, it can be a nightmare. Yeah. Sure. And for us, it's just skating too, which is a beautiful thing. We have our thing. That's why I like to stick in my style of videos of kind of like just working with specific skaters that I like and that I know like my channel and what I do. So then it's very organic, you know, Mm -hmm. and you're just showing new skating different skater you know what i mean mm-hmm. it kind of makes sense it's like a good niche for me and i'm happy to do it you know mm. you're killing it man thanks you bro. always yeah, have bro. been you've been an inspiration uh to a lot of people starting up their own channels and stuff like that you know thanks. i think a lot of people that are starting like the dan corrigans they watch you and kind of take what you've done and and, and rent, go with it yeah you know? yeah you can you can see it too for like sure. which guys have been inspired by me I, I definitely <laughs> want to talk about the Paul Rodriguez, mm-hmm. your guys' relationship as well, because you, you, I think you guys both played an, inter, an instrumental role in each other's careers. Mm-hmm. Um, even the even getting Paul on certain brands and stuff like that. So, I filmed and edited his first sponsor me video. I love that. So, where did you guys meet? Okay, so this is a great story. Um, <laughs> so we they just a, talked about they made this. a Chili's man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We just talked about this. Um, so the first time I heard about Paul was my friend Brandon Dubose. He skated for yeah. a rival skate shop called Valley Skate and Surf. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know Brandon. He, yeah, Brandon's awesome. Yeah. But uh, he told me about Paul. Is this sponsor me tape, by the way? Yes. Yeah, okay. We'll play this while you're talking. So, Go ahead. so this first trick, the Noseblunt 270, Daywan had just done this in a video part. Mm-hmm. And he told me that Paul did it and he was like switch training off stairs and doing switch back tails and all this stuff. And he's like a 13 year old kid. And I was like, bullshit, there ain't no kid in the Valley. Who's that good. And he's that young. <laughs> I didn't believe him. <laughs> so, so then we had just sponsored Paul's friend, Kevin Drabinsky and, uh, him and Paul had, uh, their sponsor me video. And, uh, they came over to my house. It was like November, 1998. And, you know, Paul's just a little dude. He's all happy. He's, like, super cool kid. And then uh, we we took him out skating, and he did all those tricks that same day. And I was like, wow. Okay, you're real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're not yeah. Sasquatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so right away, it's like, you know, we were, like, best friends. It house. just worked out. Yeah, bro. Like, that's amazing. Like, my, my old place was where we would skate the most. Mm. I had... Just graduated high school. Paul was like in school, but I think he was starting to already do homeschool. But his mom would just come and drop him off, or I'd pick him up and we'd go to 118. And we just started skating, became friends really quick. And that's the crazy thing with skateboarding. It's uh, age doesn't really matter that much. It's your talent level and how much you love skateboarding. Right. So because we both love skateboarding, like more than anything, we just instantly were like really close. And we would just skate together all the time and I would just keep filming him. And it was um, insane to see how good he got so fast. He would just learn a trick. It's like if he saw someone do something, he's like, oh, I could do it too. Hmm. (laughs) And he would just literally go and do it, you know? And uh, I remember the first time when I like really felt and knew that Paul was going to be something special was uh, he was skating that silver LAB rail and he like mm-hmm. nolly crooked it and he nolly heel nose it. Oh, which, is that, which is LAB rail? Which one? It's a it's a round silver one in this God, video. It's the one in the hallway, right? Yeah. Mike Mo skates it or skates the spot too in Fully Flare. Like, what are you from Big Spin down there or something? Um, I'm not LAB sure if he did yeah. or not, DMB, but he might have. He, he, he did something in the, in the look high. Okay. I know what you're talking about. Go ahead. Yeah, Go ahead. yeah, 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 yeah. But um, I remember he brought in, he showed me the footage, and I was so sure of it at that point. I was like, dude, you're going to be one of the best skaters ever. And I just I just knew it. 
you know? And I just looked at him. I was like, dude, you're really going to do this, dude? Like, Let's go film some YouTube videos. <laughs> <Yeah. man. laughs> Straight up. But, man. you know, at that time, he just, Damn, he just kept improving more and more and more and just never stopped. Yeah. This guy sent to DVS. I think he was on for oh, like yeah. two seconds. He and was. Then, yeah. And then he got on action. Got on, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. I stayed on DVS, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good looks, Nigel. I know, man. <laughs> and but, you helped him get on Nike as well, right? Yes. So I was working at 118 Board Shop at the time, and the uh, rep, Robbie Jeffers, was flowing me shoes here and there. The first pair of Nikes I ever got, I still have them, were some white. Uh, dunks. They were the Richard Molders, the oh, white with the oh, blue swoosh. Yeah. I still saved them, dude, because it was the first pair I ever got. Brand new, brand new. You, oh, wow, yeah, okay. sick. So, <laughs> that's dope. Yeah. yeah. But so I still have those, and uh, I remember he just somehow brought up. He's like, "Hey, would would Paul want to skate in these, or would what does he think about Nike?" And I was like, "Let me call him." So I called him, and he was sleeping, and I woke him. And I was like, "Hey, there's this Nike guy here. He wants to give you some shoes." And I was like, he's like, what? I was like, what do you think about that? I'm like, let's think about it. So we just kind of talked about it. And then he got Cersei involved. And he was on S at this point? He was on S. Oh, wow. So you talked him on out of getting out of S. <laughs> like, well, I'm, I, I, was, I was a little part of it. You know, I kind of introduced <laughs> the idea. The door. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was pretty, pretty crazy. I said that was, I think and when they got it, Paul... When, I, when they got Paul, that was the biggest thing that happened for Nike. I think it that was. changed. That really changed the game. I think for Nike, yeah, that in skateboarding, the, that opened the door. Yeah, for sure. For the, all, all the other dudes, super dope. But you had like all super respected skaters, and then you got the big dog. Right. Yeah. Like, At wow. that time. Yeah. yeah for like, sure. But yeah. And look what he's done on Nike since. Yeah. Ten plus shoes. Ten shoes. Mm -hmm. Which is incredible. Twenty years. It's yeah. been Twenty years. Man. Yeah. And that and that first, if I remember correctly, they didn't really want to give him a shoe. Mm -hmm. But he was like, "I'm not signing unless you guys give me a pro shoe." I think he talked about that on one, on his on his Nine Club episode. I mm -hmm. think he said like I I remember him saying, "That's what a pro skater." strives for yeah is a pro shoe mm -hmm. and if you're not going to give me one i'm gonna i'm not gonna sign nope i'm so happy he's, he's stuck paul if i'm if guns. i'm saying this wrong i apologize but yeah, like, i remember <laughs> yeah yeah remember that's what he i remember that's what i he was think saying. you're right yeah. <laughs> Which, man, what a good move right there. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Could you imagine Paul Rodriguez right now with now one pro shoe? Oh, my God. The world would be different. Oh, my God. It, it would have been, been way different. The world huh? would have it would have road started rotating the other way. <laughs> he had a pro shoe. It was getting developed at S. Yeah, it, and, it became a Costin yeah. after. I think he, he has a pair at his house somewhere. Yeah, he had a couple. I have a pair, too. Really? Yeah, he gave me a pair, and I was like, I'm saving these. Yeah. <laughs> It's so sick. Oh, you got a lot of memorabilia, huh? Oh man, yeah. It's all in Washington right now. Oh, okay. Because I moved back up there for a bit, so I just brought everything up there. Otherwise, I'd have brought stuff in. But no, you're good. <laughs> chilling, as long as you bring yourself, man. That's yeah. all that matters. Mm -hmm. Cool. So to this day, you know, Paul owes you a, bit, a big solid. For that, you know? <laughs> Without Nigel, we, we we've helped each other so much, that, and we're such close friends. And you know, him and my sister have a kid, a beautiful girl named Heaven, and Maybe. she's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, you know, how was that? That must have been crazy, I too, know, right? That was <laughs> got, a listen, whole you, thing that was really kind of nuts. I mean, you, know? <laughs> you're, you guys are best friends, and yeah. then he starts dating your sister. Yeah. Does yeah. that did that put a little riff in between you guys, or was that just weird? Not or at, was it not I mean, weird? I mean, okay, so the first time they met, Paul had come to stay at my house because we were going to go skate for the weekend. And uh, at that time, I was in high school. Or no, no, I wasn't in high school. Yeah, I was already graduated. Mm -hmm. But my friends wanted me to go to a party. Paul's like, I don't want to go to no party. And at this time, like, I wasn't drinking or smoking or anything mm -hmm. like that. I didn't do anything. But I still went to parties because I thought it was fun. So I was like, Paul, I'm going to go to this party. Do you just, what do you, do you want to show watch skate videos? He's like, yeah, sure. So I take <laughs> off. My sister comes home. That's when they first met. And he's just like, whoa, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> But he was still a little dude. Yeah. So they started dating, like, I think when Paul was, like, 18 or 19, and she was, like, 21, 22. Mm. And uh, I remember the first day he really confronted me about it. You know, he was, like, getting all emotional and stuff. He's like, dude, I, I got feelings for your sister. I really like her. And I kind of, like, grabbed him by the shoulder. I was like, dude. Snap you know out of it. <laughs> In a way, I grabbed Snap him. Snap out I grabbed of him, him, man. I grabbed him. I was like, wait, you know she's crazy, right? <laughs> and he's like, I don't care. I love her, dude. I'm going to take care of her. I promise. I was like, 
all right, man. Yeah, you got my blessing. Like, go for it. You know, I talked to her about this too. So I let her know. I just talked to her last night. Like, hey, Rainbow, I'm, I'm going to talk about like how you guys met and everything that happened. And she started laughing. She's like, yeah, I stole your best friend from oh you and God. had a baby. I was like, yeah, you basically did. Hey, did you feel that way though? That she did, you stole know, your best friend? At first it was normal. Mm. Everything was fine. But as they started to like progress, you know, cause we all lived together for a sec and everything was really cool. But then it eventually got to the point where, you know, they probably wanted to have a kid. Mm. So they moved out and I noticed it was just, we didn't hang out as much cause he had to hang out with my sister. Mm. And I was like, damn, this kind of sucks, dude. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And one of the other things is me and Paul would always talk about girls. Okay. Always. Oh. And then we couldn't talk about girls yeah. anymore, yeah. dude. Yeah. I was like, wait, you're with my sister. I can't even talk to you about this stuff yeah. anymore. What the hell? Yeah. You know you're like I mean? plugging ears. I don't yeah. Yeah. Don't don't say it. Here. <laughs> <We're in it. laughs> so that part was pretty funny. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is. You know, there were times when we were close and then not close and like they would get in arguments and fights and then, you know, <laughs> yeah, we yeah. wouldn't really talk too much. But now they're doing really good. So me and Paul are really close. Love that. So That's awesome. it's, they got a beautiful, great. beautiful girl out of it. Yeah. yeah. Heaven's yeah. amazing. So, you know, I lost my friend for a bit, but it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been through a lot, man. Yeah. Dude, a lot. a lot, dude. So much. I, yeah, I mean, and... and 2028 it'll be damn dude 30 years i'll know him that's wow. pretty crazy did you actually i don't even think you did but maybe i'm wrong i, I haven't seen every youtube video that you've done you have <laughs> three thousand of them <laughs> did you lean on paul a lot for your youtube videos or not even um well because mm, i mean for skatesite.com we were already organically doing that and then after it ended, of course I was hitting him up to do him, but he was so busy. So I just kind of would hit him up when it was an idea that was worth it. And, you know, his schedule was so nuts all the time. I couldn't really hit him up all the time. True. You know, and the yeah. same thing was with, with like Mike Mo and like all the other famous people I knew. It's like they had their obligations that they had to do. And I wasn't going to just sit there and keep pestering them and pestering them and pestering them because I realized it's like they're my friend first there's someone on my channel way after that. And I'm, there's no way I wanted to, to destroy any friendships or potentially destroy friendships. Right. So I've tried to be very mindful of that, you know, and be like, okay, you guys are my homies first. If you want to do a video, let's do a video. But most of the time it's like, I'll really think about the videos I'm going to do with these guys before I make it. So I bring the idea to them. And it's like, oh, yeah, we should do that for sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of just like, oh, let's just film this. You know, mm. it's like I try to think of it in depth. Yeah, so I'm not yeah. wasting either of our times. You mm. know, I want the video to do well. True. You know, and Paul's such a great human being that he just he bends over backwards for people, man. He really has a lot of times for a lot of people. A lot of people. Me dude. too. You know, he reminds of me of kind of what like a, 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 a Tony Hawk mm. situation because Tony Hawk, as big as he is. As busy as that man is, he will make something happen for somebody. He's made stuff happen for us oh, yeah. mm -hmm. he where he's time. driven up here just mm -hmm. to play a video game with us. Like he, you know what I mean? But it was yeah. his own video game, of yeah. course. But, <laughs> but it just, for me, it's like, damn, he didn't have to do that. Yeah. But you know why he did it? Because we're skaters, man. Yeah. And he wants to help out as much as he can for our, his fellow skater. And that's sure. also and that's why, why I feel Paul is. you know, that's also why Tony and Paul are who they are. True. You know what I mean? Because they put in all that extra work mm -hmm. and we can all learn from that, you know, and they've both inspired the crap out of me for my work ethic. Yeah. You know, and to like really push myself and to do that extra step and to like, you know, be presentable as much as you can and to go out of your way for those special moments and those things that can really like help our whole industry. Totally. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a big deal. Man. And it means a lot to some people. You know yes. what I mean? Like Tony Hawk leaves here. I'm still going on Tony. He leaves here. We say, hey, thanks, Tony. But he doesn't really know that, like, damn, that really meant a lot to us that yeah. he did that, mm -hmm. you know? I think he does. That's I hope I'm so. Saying. I hope that, so. That's why he does it. I think it's he, It's gratifying to be able to do that in his position. I think you're you're the pioneer, like, legend in this thing. And if you make time for the people that are actually doing things in the industry and trying right. to push this, 
I'm sure he finds it like it's, it's that's easy for him. And I think Paul's the same way too, because sure. th- at the same time, you know, he's like, whatever you guys want to do, you hit me yeah. up. I'll come over. I'll do a board setup. I'll do this. I'll, I'll, he spent like three hours here one day, just hanging out and t- talking about his the old videos. Yeah. You know? And then he comes in. Uh, you one call, and he's on our our live show. You know show. what I mean? He like, told me about that too. It was pretty cool. He's yeah. just a great dude, man. Yeah, he is. He's a great he's, dude. He's down to do projects if he has the time <laughs> totally and shout out to spanish mike for helping him in, in coordinating these things because i know he's helping out in, in in this whole process so yeah big shout out to spanish yeah as well. spanish is awesome mm-hmm. dude yeah you know what's cool is like because i grew up seeing you in like logic videos and stuff like that mm-hmm. is your little like the valley had like a really great crew of skaters coming up together yeah like, y- like it was you paul and then you had like just in case mike mikey, mikey taylor, taylor. They in the valley Okay, well, uh, oh, <laughs> hey, oh, damn, damn, he was pissed right there, too. Don't be tell, don't be, you, already already know. you already know, Kelly. Should, okay. should, should we okay. name the real Valley Heads? <laughs> well, okay, they're not, but, but that crew no, was... They, they come and, you know, it obviously was, generate that, that energy, and they would be in the Valley. Newberry, sure. I would, Newberry Park. The, yeah. I would yeah. always go out there to skate. But we, we, so merged, adjacent. We, we merged at one valley point. Adjacent. Yeah, there was a big crew. <laughs> what was that like? I mean, there, you guys were kind of in the forefront. Of, of skateboarding at one point uh, like all was, the younger kids well i feel like you know 118 we got such a big reputation and uh you know jerron helped a lot with that too because he introduced us to mike blayback and we had this whole valley thing in trans world and then everybody knew who we were yeah not just from our video but from that well, mike was only around and this is what's so crazy mike was only in the valley probably for like maybe two years if that and then he moved to san diego but in that two years he made such an impact that with everybody in the valley to a degree, I mean, I mean, that's where he definitely started to kind of shine a little bit more. Oh, I think okay. it was pretty I mean, he amazing. Was, he started yeah. in SF, but then he worked his way into the valley, and then he worked to, to make his way down to, to DC and San Diego. Then you know, yeah. Now he is who he is. You know, I just remember Logic Six coming out, and that was like big door opener for you guys. Yeah, I feel Paul's, like that, whole that was Paul's part, right? Paul, Mikey, and Justin. Yeah. They all had that parts in there. That was crazy. Yeah. Justin Case I, was so gnarly, bro. He, so like, good. That dude, I psycho. think, honestly, he might have in, been more talented than, like, not, not more talented, but I would trip out how good Justin actually was. I how think. talented. He was so consistent and buttery. Definitely. He was one of my favorites growing up. But I, I tripped out. On I think if Justin would have kept skating, he would have been huge yeah. Yeah, yeah he I was agree. so good i remember telling paul like when i saw his footage i was like this is a guy you got to compete with <laughs> i swear yeah i was like this dude is insanely good he's so amazing like such good style good pop everything you know we yeah, were all Newbury. very intimidated by he's him. Newbury, he was newberry park right <laughs> yeah yeah he was amazing but yeah those old days back then it's like our crew and their crew started skating together and everything just blew up spanky yeah uh, you know yep. van yeah. Yes, Postel, yes. like all of us, dude. We were all shredding together nonstop, and man, <laughs> little, little I miss Mikey, those times. Damn. Yeah, damn, he's a politician now, man. Great times, <laughs> that's crazy. I look that that era of Justin right there. He looks like a little Abe right there, kind of, or like you know what I mean. Like, yeah, like at that point, that's what Abe would dress like. Oh, it's so sick, dude. Damn, OG, dude. Wow, good stuff. Man. Good old days. Good old days. You see the. Uh... <laughs> wait, wait, was, that, was, that, was that El Camino? Was no, that, that was I Newberry High, Newberry right? High? It was Newberry or Moor Park. Yeah, there was like there's, there's a couple different schools that, that had the same similar. ledges. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, mm-hmm. It was like right next to the skate park, right? Uh, yeah. Newberry Park. There was one yeah. there. Newberry was the one that had the OG ledges, but then they got super chunked out. Yeah, and then there was. Or was Thousand Oaks High that had the higher yeah, version? Yeah, Tio had the higher one. And then there's the one way out in the middle of nowhere. That was more like, I think, in Moore Park. Or Oxnard. Camarillo? Yeah, Oxnard. Yeah, Oxnard. Remember? Yes, Oxnard. Do you remember the name of the I had school? a line there, dude. You did. Yeah, you did. Uh, Nolly Crook in the back tail of 270 shot. Yeah, you yeah. were the first one to tell us about that spot. And then yeah, we started was, hitting it all the time. Ty. That was from Ty. I think I went there. Mike Mo might have been there that night. That might have been the first time that I met him. But I, I'm not sure. Man, those ledges were good. They were. They were. Has there been like a crazy moment or sl- you've filmed with so many people? Has there been like a crazy slam or anything that it was just? Ooh, yes. Okay, so I think I was there the day when Josh Casper's career kind of like died. Oh wow! Yeah, this is a really crazy story. 
So um, someone from Dwindle hit me up. I would just go and shoot for them. They'd pay me a really good day rate, too. It was great. Okay. Yeah, it was really cool. So they, they came and picked me up. Like, oh, we're going to go skate with Josh Casper. I was like, oh, what? Yeah, let's go. I'm so <laughs> down. Like, what's he going to do? You know, he's like, oh, he's going to go to the 16 stair. I'm like, what? And at that time, that was still, like, huge. Yeah. You know, so it's we're still like big, bro. Yeah, it's, it's still big, <laughs> pretty big. But, I mean, yeah. back then it was like, you no, know, people were yeah, just hitting that. 12 stairs and crap, yeah. you know, so we're like, all right, let's go. And then like he was going to switch Ollie it and uh, he tried to switch Ollie and uh, he died. Really? He hit his head super hard oh. and it was brutal. But uh, at that time, the dwindle guys would bring their tapes and I shot it on their tape. Oh. So they took the tape. So I don't have the clip, but that footage never came out. What but do you think was, happened from it? Do you think that because you said it was almost like the end of his career? Or I don't really remember too much new stuff coming out after that, but he hit his oh. head stupid hard and was like on the ground forever. Wow. And we were all pretty freaked that, out. Uh, no, he was like moving, but not very much. And he was kind of like twitching. And, oh, uh, you know what gosh. I mean? It was scary as hell. That is very like, scary. You asked the perfect question because that for sure was the scariest slam I was ever there Damn. for. And I was, you know, I was all hyped. I was like, oh my God, he's going to switch Ollie. This huge set. And he just died. I was like, ah, no. Oh. So wait, did he land on his board and like kind of yeah. spin out? Like, and he, well, you know, like, oh, okay, man. so so this happens to a lot of skate. This is good for everyone to know. Like, you know, people jump down stairs switch and they try and stay in their switch position. But no matter what, you almost always slightly turn backside. Mm. So Mike Mo hit his head on the 16. Like uh, Shane, I think, got banged up pretty good trying to switch flip to 18. Damn. And this dude got annihilated. So it's like, if you're going to jump down some stairs switch, try and get yourself to turn front side a little bit. Mm. <laughs> you Jeez, know what I mean? Man. But That's it's happened scary. to a lot of guys. Damn. I wonder if that was one of the reasons. Because some of these skaters just come and go, right? Yeah. You're like Josh Casper came, made an impact, and then kind of just... Big impact he, he was yeah. there for a while, though. It wasn't like a one-and-done thing, man. He no, was, no, no, I'm yeah. not saying it was one-and-done, so, but 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 what, what, they just go... They, they disappear, yeah. right? Like, what yeah. happens? Like, you often wonder this. Unless like that, they have had an interview, you don't know. That totally. happened around, like, totally. 2000, That's 2001, so and the first time I remember seeing them was in Trilogy, yeah. and that came out in... 90... Six, yeah, 95, yeah, 90, somewhere 90, around 95, there. 96. Yeah. 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 Like that one kid that skated for Blind for a hot second. Uh, I forget his name, Luis. Uh, bro, he just switched no, Car Car biggest Carlos. stuff Carlos. ever, yeah. biggest stuff yeah. ever. And then what happened, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he came out swinging, swinging. Yeah. and had some gnarly bales in that thing, too. Oh. Where you're just like. Do wow. it, he like 50 50 that huge hubba, and then he comes out doing it switch. Yes, that's yeah. the guy. Yeah, it was just like, what? This was a uh, right here. Yeah. yeah. This, oh, oh my god. god. Oh gosh. His back lip on El Toro looked so crazy. I was there that day. You were there? I, I heard he was going. My friend, uh, like, he oh called me. A little, goodness, I was like, I'll be bro. there. <laughs> were there any close calls? Dude, it looked like he was just trying to back. Alley you back 180 over it, and he just it looked like he was just trying to go over it, and then he just put it down. And you wonder where he went, like, yeah. oh my god, <laughs> dude. I mean, not, from, from what I heard, I there was like some interview or something about it, and like he never really got too hurt, but really, Carlos Ruiz, yeah, yeah, wow. he, yeah, he went for it, bro, bro, but big yeah, he, time. He he was kind of a uh, came and left pretty yes, quick. One but, yeah, I mean, this is his only part, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, that was scary, man. If you have a part where it's just this it's just gnarly stuff that's a hard career to keep going how do you yeah, do that right hard. you know right i mean there, yeah, a lot of people train wreck i feel like kind of switched there it is came and left he gapped so far down that yeah. i remember I, just, I remember Jesus. laughing right in the middle so hard when he landed it i i was laughing <laughs> i could not believe i just watched someone do that you know this back then there was like nothing going down on that nah, thing. Not no like that. not like yeah. that <laughs> Dude. I wish I could have seen that with oh my, my own eyes. Dude, I just... I mean, oh, God. I, w I was there when Clive Dix and Nolly Noseblunted it. That, that is nuts. nuts. Yeah, that it was so cool slide. to see that. He, he was telling... Like, there was some interview of him. It was like a little documentary. Mm -hmm. I think that board slide, he had like... He was working <laughs> and then it went for lunch, went and did the board slide and went back to work or something nuts like that. Oh That's God. insane. <laughs> this is... I can't believe. Oof. Oh, wow. he... Like, got... Like, he, he adjusted mid. He hopped on his board mid grind. Uh, has anyone ever done a crazier switch 50-50 than that? I don't know. 
Dude, it looks like that thing would stick no matter what. You know what I mean? It's like that cement that looks like... Well, Heath stuck at the top. Remember that and died? Yeah. Mm. Jesus. He had guardian angels. Straight up. I know, right? (laughs) Man. He did it, though. He did it. He did it. So... That Jeez. was the gnarliest one you've seen, pretty yeah. much. I mean, hitting your head is not a fun thing to do, oh, man. It's, dude, and it's I, not a fun thing to witness, I should say, no, because it's, like it's, it's gnarly. When yeah. it happens to you, it's traumatizing enough. When right. it happens, I, there was blood coming out of his ear. That was one oh. thing I remember for sure. Wow. So working with someone like Andy and he wears a helmet, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but also, well, Andy does jump to hug himself, right? Dude. Yeah, he does. He yeah. skates huge rails. He just yes. skated a giant one, like a 32, and 30? it's curved. And he skated the outside. He didn't skate the easy part. He skated the outside of it, and it was 105 degree weather just two, <laughs> two weekends ago. You're describing the worst spot ever. Yes, <laughs> and Andy attacked it. And there's there's like footage of it where he's just like laying on the ground, like dying. And he like the runway was in the sun. He's getting cooked with a helmet on the on. hardest day, hottest day of the year. Oh. Dude, yeah, and we're just like, get him some water. Like, have him take a break. Like, are you sure you want to do this, Andy? Don't get a heat stroke. And he did it. I love Andy, man. Yeah, he's he's he best, is the best dude. He's I can't. An animal. I mean, I can't say so many uh, enough nice things about that guy. And um, I think he won over skateboarding. I think so. Yeah. Yep. I think that in the beginning, it was hard for him. I don't know personally if it was hard for him, but you know, a lot of people weren't. I mean, he's wearing a helmet. Yeah, that's kind of that's a kind of frowned up, frowned upon. And I think that he <laughs> I, he he just being himself <laughs> and sticking with just being himself. Yeah, and how good he is and talented he is. You, you cannot love him. Yeah, I ain't even tripping off that no more. I I can't I can't. <laughs> I definitely. Had, I was just gonna say, I, dude. I definitely had reservations, bro. I, I was just like, damn. I mean, he's wearing the helmet, but like after getting to know him and knowing who he is, like he's the man. And mm-hmm. I'm not even tripping off that helmet. Big ups to your helmet, bro. <laughs> yeah. I remember that makes him who he is. For sure. On the like experience, sure. you were like, "What's up with the helmet?" Yeah, it, it, it was so funny because you just like you just you're like I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but again, I was being honest. In no, that totally. Moment. And again, I think that he's the man, bro. He Real is. talk. Yeah, you know. So it makes sense. I'm really proud of him and what he's accomplished and how he just stuck to his guns yeah. and he's unapologetic about it. And that's just really who he is. Yeah. A lot of know? people would have conformed to what the industry wanted yes yeah and the uh, industry's known for doing that to people too you yeah, know? and true. sometimes it's warranted to be yes. honest with yes, you it sometimes is, it's warranted it listen put some different pants on you'll be good <laughs> all right yeah, yeah, change yeah. your shirt you'll be all right we're yeah. all Maybe looking get out a new for shoe you. sponsor because that ain't working for <laughs> yeah. you pot player yeah. you know what i mean yeah. sometimes it's warranted it is but andy anderson dude god bless him man he is the best dude and yeah you gotta respect it yeah, up. he's he's got his hustle and he's running it. Oh, <laughs> and he's it. got his skills are gnarly. Oh, his like, skills ridiculous. It's crazy, so mm-hmm. crazy. I can't. I still can't believe he went to the Olympics for skating park. Yeah, dude, you for park, dude. That's a whole different world of skateboarding. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're just he's not skate- known for that yeah, really either. He's not, but he is unreal. Yeah, I just love it. The end of his run, he went and did freestyle on top of the middle. Like, yeah. and then- <laughs> has he talked to you guys about that? I don't I, remember no. if he did. Maybe he can't. I think he's come on. I think we. I think we did talk about. So it. that was yeah. his plan yeah. almost the entire time. Was just to go do a freestyle at the end of his yes. run. Yes. Yeah. And he just wanted to showcase to the world how he skates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was amazing. You mm-hmm. know. And and I worked with him through like a whole documentary that's supposed to come out on Braille sometime soon. I was there filming every single try for the Olympics mm. for like almost two years before, and it sucked. Because it was super serious, Andy, training for the Olympics. When, like, we go out and skate and make our videos, we're just messing around having fun. Yeah. It's so fun. But this was, like, a whole other ball game, And I had to film every single try. So I know exactly how hard it was for him to do that. And it was not easy. It was really crazy. And... I was dreading him going for the next Olympics because oh, I was just thinking about it. I'm like, I'm going to do that again. Oh. I was like, no, Andy, please don't do it. You know, is he going to go? Because <laughs> he can go for street and for park, but I'm sure I'm assuming he'll probably just go for park. Right now, he's not going. Oh, he's not. Yeah. He oh. just wants to focus on designing product and skating street. And may- maybe before you guys put this out there, you guys should check with him and make sure. 
but you yeah, know, sure. but he's mm-hmm. he just likes to do what he's doing right now, and I'm you could very tell. happy about that. You could tell though. You could tell <laughs> yeah. he's, he's he likes what he's doing. Yeah, because he's putting it out his new little wheels and stuff. Mm-hmm. He's like, I want to. I need to come on the show and talk about my new wheels. <laughs> like, yeah. He's like hyped, you know. Yeah, yeah. And he's been working on all this stuff with George for years, right. forever. So it's really rad that now he's taking the time to just finish it all, make it come out, do it. Mm-hmm. So, and it's a lot more fun to work with him doing this stuff than it is the, the Olympics. That oh, was yeah. not fun. This is a weird question, mm-hmm. but I think it's relevant, right? You have a guy like Andy Anderson, <laughs> and you have a uh, you have a bunch of people that have YouTube channels. Yourself, Dan Corrigan, uh, whoever else Andy's friends with. Do you ever think about too much Andy, right? Do you ever think about like, oh, I have, I've got all these videos with, with Andy. Dan's got all these videos with Andy. Are we putting Andy out there too much? Is less Andy better? Like, is it, is it going to, do you ever think about that? Or are you just like, dude, these are my, these are my bros. We're skating together. Here's our video. doesn't matter. There was a point where Andy knew he was putting out too much. Okay. And I think we might be right around reaching that right now. Mm, interesting. So we are aware. Okay. And Andy will just kind of like, I'm going to do my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> and Andy Andy needs his personal time and space. So he knows. Well, <laughs> it's the truth, dude. I love so, it. I, I can so we are very, saying that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to yeah. do my thing, man. Right? <laughs> we are very aware. Okay. Of how much and you know, but the people love him and we love working together and everyone loves working with Andy. Mm -hmm. So, but he's very conscious of how much energy he has and how much he can put out. Right. So, you know, I'm really just open with him and just hit him up. Like, Hey, what do you want to do today? Do you want to skate? Do you want to like talk about a board? Talk about wheels? Like, what do you want to do? Do you want to skate and just chill? Not film anything? Cause we do that all the time, Mm -hmm. you know? And, uh, it just, Whatever we feel like doing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you working with, you said you work for, you're working for Powell? Yeah, I work with Powell Peralta. Just I'm, for you doing YouTube stuff with YouTube him. and, you know, I kind of help with a good amount of stuff. Like I'm realizing my marketing abilities are pretty good. Yeah. So I come up with ideas and kind of just talk to them about it and they listen. Cool. So I'm pretty psyched about that. And just little things here and there, you know what I mean? But I get a nice retainer and I have a company Amazing. card. So when I go film with any of the writers or work on anything, I can help pay for food. Ooh, gas. we get pizza after this. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Listen, we just talked about Powell Peralta, man. Yeah. There you go. There's yeah. your yeah. Set, Validated. A, set an invoice. We're going to get a pizza. <laughs> but working with uh, George and Stacy is awesome. I can just talk to them directly. And talk to them about ideas, stuff I want to do, trips, mm-hmm. everything. Yeah, so it's super rad. It's super rad. Mm-hmm. Like I can just text them or call them whenever. I talk to George pretty much every week. Amazing. It's it, really yeah. sick. <laughs> I think the YouTube channel it's 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 growing, man. And Theirs I, or yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. No, it is for sure. Got it right here. Boom. Yep, yep. Do you do the thumbnails or do you just let them do everything? They they do most of the thumbnails. Okay. I just will s- submit videos and uh, ideas. So you don't do every video on here. No. You just do, you submit a few yeah. here and there. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. But mainly it's like, you know, all of our channels in one way or another, because a lot of the guys on the uh, Powell Peralta team now have their own channels, mm. but, and we're all kind of marketing Powell Peralta through all of our own channels. It's an ecosystem. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And I've had this dream forever. I've been trying to get guys to work together as a team with all our different channels and we're always working with each other, yeah. you know, yeah, but you got, I would, I would always try and get it set up. I'd blow someone up and then be like, Oh, let's do a video. And they would ghost me. I'm like, well, geez, thanks bud. I did my part. Now you're screwing me. Yeah. And once again, not going to say names, you know, Yeah. but they suck. <laughs> <laughs> Just whispered into the mic. Nobody's yeah. going to hear. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> but you know, with the Pal Parata team, it's not like that. So yeah, it's, that, it's that, interesting. You, you guys are actually basing a team off of, YouTube. Well, you got Dale Decker, right? Yeah. Well, Dale Dale is part of it, you know. He's, you got Zach Doling. Zach Doling, for sure. But uh, uh, Dan Corrigan. Dan Corrigan. And he has his channel. He doesn't right. upload that much, too. And I'm trying to work with him to get to do it more, because he should. Because yeah. we got him, like, 30,000 subs now. And uh, whenever he uploads a video, it does well. Yeah. But, you know, Andy is on Andy time. And he <laughs> does what Andy chooses. So, you know, it's like when I can get him to do a video, it always does well. But um, then we got Christopher Hyatt. 
And yep. then uh, Deville has a channel now. Okay. His videos are doing well, really well Sick. as well. Yeah. So we have a nice little web that of guys, and we're all working together on this. And if you add all those views up together, mm. we're kicking some ass. Mm. That's a lot of views. And it's all associated with Pal Peralta. Mm. Yeah. So it's a really cool thing that we got going on. And I've been trying to do this, like I said, for like 10 years yeah, to but get a crew like this yeah. But it, it's the right crew that happened at the right time. Yeah. It's hard in skateboarding, man. You're not it gonna is. get that with every team, dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, even even as good as the job you Santa Cruz is doing, like their guys aren't out there. Tom Asta, phenomenal. Easy. His yeah. YouTube channel right Killing now it. is growing. And I just love to see Tom Asta doing it, man. Yeah. Like he's, you know, it's like he's, here's the thing that you people have to realize is like, as good as Tom Asta is and as, as, as dope as the company Santa Cruz that he skates for is, he's taking his own career into his own hands, man. If anything happens to his skate career as Santa Cruz or one of his sponsors, he's got it. Yep. He has it. He's making revenue for himself. He, you know what I mean? He's marketing himself. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, Not that he yeah. doesn't want to go away from Santa Cruz, but I'm just saying like, if something happened, another team will probably pick him up real quick. Totally. But <laughs> real quick. I'll, I'll, I'll have, hit him up right away. Yeah, yeah. Hey, come no. on over, bro. <laughs> but to take your career into your own hands and start making money for yourself, yeah. I think it's huge, man. And I think yeah. a lot of people are missing out on that. I think, but they I think are. for someone like Tom, it, it comes very natural. I don't, I don't think that he's out there stressing. Like, he, I think he's just like, oh, well, I'm gonna go play video games today, films, and, or I'm gonna go film today and fucking kill the game, and then I'm gonna fucking <laughs> upload. Like, that's, that's him, and it's very natural. It's not like he's like stressing about it. That's just me on the outside looking in. I don't think he's tr like maybe he has stuck. Don't get me wrong, but from the outside looking in, I think he's just killing it and having fun with it. I think yeah. you know what I think and I will have to talk to Tom about this, but cuz he started off with Twitch, right? He started off with Twitch. He plays video games. He's always talking to the camera. Mm. He's on there like Every, at least once a week, I think. Um, he's got a pretty good following on I there. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, dude, you were already like adapted. Right. You know yeah. I mean? like, right. And so I think that once you start putting stuff out there and you kind of, listen, I think as a skateboarder, we're always worried. Mm. I was worried when we started this show. I didn't know what people were going to think. We overthink it. I think a lot of people don't do stuff because of what people are going to think. For and sure. that's why that's I, that, completely the truth. And that's yeah, why man. I applaud Tom for doing that and just really taking control over what he's doing, man. And he's killing, he's doing a great job. He's I rad. Applied. He seems like he's never gave a fuck about what anybody thought. I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know. That's again, that's outside looking. We in. should ask him. You know what I mean? Who knows? We gotta get I back think on we the all, show. I think yeah. I think there is a part of us where we think about what other people think. Oh, for, for sure. sure. Definitely. Definitely. I, I think uh, no matter what, as YouTubers, you know, and people, do you call yourself a YouTuber? Media? Are you? Uh, I mean, you, I am. You, okay. You know, I'm. I am for you ain't sure. Shying away from it. Yeah, I, I can't. You know, at this point, I've been doing it for so long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I've but been doing know. it since it started. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, I was one of the people who saw it and was like, "Oh, this is awesome! Let's yeah. go!" You right, know, and right, for yeah. a lot of skateboarders, are like, "I don't know about that. Oh, what are people gonna think? It's gonna get, get kind of crazy." Mm -hmm. So I was the crazy one who just jumped right in. Yeah. But um, for anyone who does do it, I applaud them because it takes courage. You know what I mean? It's not something where. You're going to do it, and you might get really lucky, and a couple of videos will do really good right away, but eventually, you're going to mess up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're going to get those bad comments. You're going to get a, a video that tanks. Yeah. And are you going to keep making your videos? Are you going to bounce back from that? Or yeah. are those yeah. comments going to crush you? You know what I mean? And I've been around for the comments forever, yeah. so I've gotten destroyed before, and I've had to like know how to shield myself when I read those comments and, uh, you know, yeah. not, not let him beat me up. Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of guys, even skaters who will work with me on the channel, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll read the comments and like, they'll stray away a little bit. They're, they're like, dude, I can't do another video that just tore me to pieces. Right. You know, I'm like, dude, yeah. this is the way the internet is. Yeah, like man. you were amazing in that video. Yeah. <laughs> like, Which is sad to think that that's the way that it is. It is. You know, you're like, you got to get some thick skin, bro. Yeah. It's yeah. like one of those to. things. Or just don't look at the fucking comments. Yeah. If that's yeah. going to affect you like that, and I know we all want to see positive comments, don't look at the comments. Upload your shit and yeah. walk away and see what happens. Yeah. Let your let your buddies be like, bro, your shit's killing it. Or your your shit's not killing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, have you read those comments? <laughs> I think it's a double-edged sword, man, because I think constructive criticism, yes. comments, yes. I think are great. And totally. I think I, I think you can learn a lot 
from the commenters, you know, not the shitlord commenters, but, <laughs> but most of them do not live constructive criticism. <laughs> but most I'll take, of them but do I not. will take constructive criticism all day long yeah. Yeah. because I think it's Me constructive. Yeah. That's why it's called constructive criticism. Yeah. Not yeah. just like this shit sucks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay, buddy. But why? Why? Yeah. It, you don't, you don't know. Okay. Move along. Yeah. Dude. It matters how move they're, along. how they're approaching you with it. If they're saying totally. something like negative, like, and not trying to really, you know, be compassionate about the, the message they're sending you, <laughs> then like, bro, you know, I'm yeah. going to dismiss that. For yeah. sure. For sure. Like, see you later. <laughs> yeah, I think once you're in the internet, but I think YouTube has opened up a lot of doors just recently with YouTube shorts as well, right? Mm -hmm. Because this is what I was talking about earlier is like, you post stuff on your Instagram, you have a TikTok. Oh, well, now there's YouTube shorts. Now, listen, we're not going to monetize it, but at least you're getting your channel started. I just had a deep conversation with a, a pro skater the other day about YouTube shorts. They're doing TikToks and stuff. I'm like, you, you already have the content, Post on YouTube shorts. Get it out there. There's a universe that lives on YouTube. They're going to see it, you know? And you could start, to, I don't know about YouTube shorts, but you could start building that community, right? But my point is, just start doing it. You post a, a, a Instagram that gets, you know, 40, 50, 60,000 views, 100,000 views. How much money do you make it all that? Nothing. Now nothing. Nothing. Yeah. You post something. <laughs> yeah. You post something on YouTube that gets a hundred thousand views. There's four or five hundred bucks right there. Whatever the case may be. I don't know your CPM, but you know what I mean, though. Yeah. There's an opportunity there. Can you double dip? Can you? Hundred um, percent. Put the same content. Yep. People do it all the time. Okay. Yeah. I encourage it. Here's the thing. Let me quick, quick, just quick, quick, quick. I feel like TikTok and YouTube Shorts are kind of on the same playing field. Instagram, you're kind of like, hey, here's my content, everybody. YouTube Shorts, you're not even like ticking the box where it says uh, notify subscribers. You're putting it out there. You just put it out there and it starts to go in the algorithm. And you're not really telling people like, hey, here's my new content. People are just finding it. They're just scrolling and it pops up. Just organically. So you posting something one day a week it's not flooding it by any means because right. people are just going to see it sporadically. Right. They're, so they're kind of not difference. connected either. It's like the shorts thing and the normal YouTube videos thing. I'm discovering they're not really connected. They're so. trying to fix it. Yeah. They're trying to fix that out. It's two algorithms. Well, I think it's kind of mm. good to keep them separated so you can upload as many shorts as you want, you know? But yeah. the discoverability, like, oh, I, here's a short. I want to go watch that person's long form content. That's what it can lead to. Yeah. But as far as I know, I've talked to a lot of people to get a lot of subscribers from shorts, but mm -hmm. then their long form content doesn't really get more hits. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Leave in the comments and let us yeah. know what your guys' channels are doing. For me, it's discoverability. <laughs> For me, it's a free commercial. Yeah. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube Shorts, Facebook. It's all just a it's a free ad. Yeah. Hey, here's my stuff. Because right. I know for me, I'll scroll, 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 scroll. I'll see somebody five or six times before I'm like, I'm interested now. Let me go see what this person's all about over on YouTube. Let me go see what their other videos are like. So I know I, you know, I, I'm I'm one of those people, you know? takes a while i haven't got too into watching the shorts thing to be mm. honest with you but i think it's huge <laughs> i think it's huge i think it can help a lot of people with getting their channel started but um for me personally i just love doing the long form stuff i want to tell a story yeah. you know what i mean right and get right. people into it like for, for us it's helped yeah it's helped a lot you can tell mm -hmm. for sure. Sure. Like with mm -hmm. subscribers or every, views, everything. everything. You, you, yeah, you, you can feel it when your channel's fire kicking. You know, you yeah. can feel it when your your channel's firing. Maybe I'll start uploading more shorts then. I'll see. It's cool. I'll like experiment. when you look at those analytics on things, like a short, mm -hmm. you'll be like, oh, this got this amount of views, but it got like, hey, 10 people subscribed because of that one right. short. You and can like, tell. You can tell. Yeah, yeah it, it has, it. has yeah. all the yeah. analytics yeah. on mm -hmm. there. That's and you're good. like, whoa okay so 10 more people came over because of that one short right and it's it's interesting to see that and you were you know we talked about social media for a while but you were you were definitely right on all that like hitting all cylinders and yeah and so it's you could feel it yeah you cool. Feel it, i mean man. when you're hitting all cylinders yes you definitely can feel it because mm -hmm. it seems like we're do we're checking all the boxes right right, right. yeah yeah makes do you sense. guys use your community tab quite a bit not as much as we should 
Yeah. We're trying to get better at, because listen, it's we're a small crew here, man, and we have 20 things each to do. So we're trying to get better at, at managing our Discord. <laughs> I'm going through our Discord right now, trying to make little changes here and there, trying to get, uh, I want to be more engaging on there. I want to post stuff on there, because I think Discord is huge. Mm. Uh, just the older cats kind of don't know. It's, it's, hard, it's tough to get into, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and then also, yes, you know, just community tab and stuff like that it's kind of fun yeah. i i encourage people to like go on there because it's more like an instagram or twitter type thing where mm-hmm. you can like upload stuff I, I figured out through the thrasher page you can upload gifs oh yeah and those do really well you should check into it it's fun too. so you make a little gif or gif of your little of the skate thing or whatever and then post it yeah and mm-hmm. they do really well the traction's great it gets lots of comments and Let lots me of make views a gift too. right now <laughs> <laughs> oh, Charlie! We're gonna rip that. Charlie's gonna put that in for everybody gift? out <laughs> there. <laughs> that, that's a, this is what came to your mind right there. <laughs> <laughs> is it the robot? What is that? Yeah. What is this? Thing? What is this? <laughs> oh man! I'm saying make that gif. You know? <laughs> what is this thing? What, what, what is this thing, man? Oh, that's so cool. Well, I just want to congratulate you. Nigel, mm-hmm. um, just on everything, man, just for being a Thanks, pioneer dude. in all, all the YouTube thing. And, you know, yeah. I, I think a lot of people can learn from uh, what, what you've done. And a lot of people have. I it's think amazing, so. Bro. I think for all of us as YouTubers, you know, especially us who have been doing it for years and years and years, if people talk to us or pay attention to what we did, they can know kind of what to expect, you know, and to do it for a long time, it's you're going to always have to change and evolve and figure out new things and, you know change with the times and figure out what works new, new gear, new Mm -hmm. editing processes. There's so many things that go into it, you know, and right now it's very competitive. So you better come with your A game. Totally. Really trying to do it. Totally. (laughs) I think a lot of people's problem too is like, you know, they, they have high hopes for YouTube because there's a lot of there, there's a, there's a big monetization thing attached to YouTube. Huge. When you first get into there, it's like, monetize it, monetize it. You can make millions of dollars. It's it, <laughs> it's kind of like a fantasy, you know, a false fantasy. And I think people, you know, they upload one or two videos and they don't see the results. Good luck on your first video getting like over 500 views. Like you're going to start off low. You're going to get 100 views, you right. know, unless you just come out swinging like Chase Gabor with his Tony Hawk and Rodney oh, Mullen yeah, or yeah. whatever. You have to be really right. But even it. then, he's still going to have to put in his work. 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's totally. An, it's an investment for him too. Like I, I tell everyone, if you're going to start a channel, be ready to work for free for at least a year. Exactly. And you're going to work your ass off and you're going to work super hard. Yep. You know, and you might not make very much money. You might get lucky. And, you know, start to make money pretty quick and blow up. But that's pretty rare. Some people know? win the lottery. Yeah. yeah. Like, like I feel like Dan Corrigan, he studied it and figured it out and did it the right way. And he started making money pretty quick. But he did it in a way that he, it was sustainable. And he liked to do the videos. And it worked. But most people, they don't think into it that much. They just, mm-hmm. just like you said, they start to make one, two videos they don't do what they expected. They don't get monetized. And they're like, I just spent all this time and energy making these videos and right. no one's watching them. It's like everyone in the world has the same idea as you. D- did you guys know that being a YouTuber is now the most requested job to have on the planet? It's like the what? Me Too job, right? It passed astronauts. It's astronauts so was forever. When kids are asked this now, they're like, oh, oh I want to be a yeah. YouTuber. Yeah. Oh, that's their that's thing. the number yeah. one thing. It's wow, like, is that crazy or what? That is crazy. Well, I feel yeah. like kids nowadays they don't want a normal job; they just want to be an influencer <laughs> yeah. or a YouTuber. That's what they yeah. they want. They don't want to work. Well. They want to be an influencer. Mm. Influencer. Like, wow. Yeah. yeah. Jeez, influencer. Where, where Little do they know that everyone in the world wants that too. <laughs> Damn. We need a lot more doctors. We need a lot yeah. more. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Think about this, Teachers. guys. I mean, they're, they're, they're all going to figure it out real quick, though. Oh, yeah. Just how hard it is. For sure. You know what I mean? It's not an easy thing to accomplish. Totally. I'm sorry, everyone. It's very tough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not you everybody know, you can guys... be the Jake Paul brothers and all this. Oh, that man, just don't yeah. happen like that. You know? No, and they had to work their butt off, yeah, too. Everyone exactly. does. They yeah. got to, You got to take huge risks. You got to make an ass of yourself, or you got to do be extremely talented, yeah. or super funny, or whatever it is. You know, what Mr. Beast did, that was incredible. He just kept reinvesting his money. He's you know an, what I mean? He's an anomaly, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. But he just, yeah. he bet everything. Yeah. yeah. He still you know bets what I mean? everything, He still right? bets everything. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's incredible. Mm-hmm. Like, whoever would have thought you could do that? Yeah. You know? 
truly it's truly amazing it is it is so you better be ready to go big yeah like really big and i would not i i 100 agree with you but i don't mm -hmm. want to detour people especially skaters in our industry because i <laughs> no but i'm just saying like yo you already post skate videos post one post one youtube it's See, there i think every i think every skateboarder who has an instagram should be uploading all their stuff to youtube just like you, you said thank i think you. that's very yeah. easy and everyone should start that way easy dude. you know what i mean mm -hmm. and then see if you like it see what happens go from there because listen you, post, you know? like just put together like a little minute minute 30 of all your footage you could do you even do just do a once a month drop mm -hmm. or something just com combine all your stuff is Easy. there a lot of is there a lot of YouTubers that are not on like so, like Twitter and, and, and Instagram? I think and, you need it. I'm just saying, is there more of a you know the the YouTuber guys that are not paying attention to Instagram because cause then you're like I said, then you're like double dipping and then now oh well, I've seen this on Instagram now I'm seeing it on fucking yeah, but YouTube. you have to understand though it's 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 a lot of people live on different platforms True. like okay. you live on I'm Instagram, Instagram yeah. I live on YouTube right. Kelly lives on Mars. <laughs> I was going to say Jupiter. Yeah, I was going yeah. to say, say Uranus. Yeah, no, yeah, there too. Uh, no, I'm like an Instagram dude for See, sure. Yeah, yeah. So everybody lives on their own kind of platform. And yeah. a lot of people, they do triple dip and they do our, they're on everything. They want to yeah. see what's going on. I mean, I do go around to each platform and look and I do see like the same thing, but people live yeah There's i personally a mainly live on youtube okay. same but yeah. you know i'm i'm on instagram i use it yeah. but it's personally i use instagram mainly to like help blow up all the skaters you mm -hmm. know because everyone loves instagram they all love their instagram followers and views so i help them through that mm -hmm. right you know what i mean and then with youtube that's a whole other thing but certain skaters do well on youtube and certain youtubers do well i mean certain skaters do well on instagram yeah. you know where i think you they know do the worst mean? tiktok like, yep yeah. Oh I know, yeah, I TikTok, I think TikTok hates skaters. Yeah, <laughs> it hates them. I think TikTok hates skateboarders too. Yeah, it's like the type of content. It's not made for. Yeah, it's weird, right? Like it's, it's not. not for, it's not made yeah. for 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 TikTok skateboarding. From, from what I've heard is that it's considered a dangerous activity. So they don't want you to put anything that's dangerous on there. So if you stick with very mellow oh, skating, but you can do like TikTok challenges, tips. jumping out of a boat and start killing people. <laughs> yeah, like, come on, what are you talking in front about? Of a car, like, what are we doing? Well, that's you what gotta, I've heard. If you got a cool dance, then show it off. You yeah, know, you, people, people, are running, <laughs> people are getting messed up running up fucking milk yeah. crates, and you yeah. know what I mean? Like they're getting. It's they're like Chris, true. you could do a TikTok dance with that little dance you did earlier. This one. No, you just, it was more of a robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The robot one. Do a little video of that, and then you'll be you'll be good on TikTok. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's just weird how different platforms really kind of push different things. It is know, what it is. It, it is gotta, what it is, man. You know, <laughs> figure out the formula. Do what oh, works for you. <laughs> figure right. it out for yourself. That's right. Man. I have friends who do really well on TikTok, but it's not for me. We post really. uh, on the Nine Club stuff, and I'm like, I have no idea how this is gonna work. Like. And I'll look at the, I'm like, what does that have like 300,000 views? <laughs> <laughs> and then one's like, oh, it's got 2,000 views. I'm like, what is wrong? What, it's how? Weird. How it does that weird. work? But our kind of content is kind of the it, it, TikTok thing, you yeah. know, a little podcast, whatever, funny, funny little clips. And right. just, I don't know, it's weird. I would man. imagine the funny stuff doing really well on there. Yeah. Yeah. The Jamie Thomas one. The cartoon. The cartoon. Yeah, it's it got like over a million, I think. Yeah, right? it's like something nuts. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. Where even at Jamie Thomas was like, hey, my kid told me I was like legitimately going viral at at his school. He was like, <laughs> the kid, all my friends are telling like are talking about my dad. <laughs> He's like going, went it went viral on TikTok. Yes, and it's funny that Jamie Thomas like was like, What are you talking about? Shout out to Reese G, man. Yeah, Reese Big G. Shout out. <laughs> Reese G. Nigel. Yes. Dude, this has been a great conversation, it's awesome, man. Bro. It's been so, I mean, uh, it's been so rad just sitting here talking to you about it. I could sit here for <laughs> two more hours talking about YouTube. Hey, oh. nerding you guys out, want man. to talk about, yeah. man. I'm, good. I'm nerding out on this YouTube Straight stuff. Up. We'll talk more about it after the show. <laughs> cool. But hey, you come back anytime. We'd love yeah. to have you back. Just, just hit got... me up if, you know, you guys want to do something with some guests too, I'm sure. Yeah, Andy man. or P-Rod or whoever would love yeah. to come in and do some stuff. Fascinating oh, yeah. stuff, sure. dude. Fascinating stuff. Kelly, we would grab, we grab yeah. Nigel some stuff, dude, to take home with us. Yeah. Yes, please. Please, what size? I'm down. Uh, XL shirt. XL. XL. Yeah. You ain't XL, yeah. man. This is double XL. What? Dog. Yeah. He's a big <laughs> dog. <laughs> man, you've been working out or something. I, I actually have gained almost 20 pounds of muscle in the last month. 
Which is kind of sure crazy. It's muscle? What are we I'm, <laughs> I'm heavier than I've ever been. I almost weigh 190 what are we doing? pounds. What are we doing? Um, I started taking a lot of amino acids okay. and eating a lot of protein because I started to study with our diets how um, you should pay attention to what your ancestors ate. So all my ancestors ate lots of meat, oh. berries, roots, stuff like that. Okay. So I just started eating a lot of meat. And the amino acids help your body adjust and absorb everything. And I weighed myself thinking I was still going to weigh 165 and I was almost 190. Oh, yeah. But I'm skinnier now. But I'm just swelling up everywhere at the same time. So you're not you're working out? You're not doing <laughs> oh, anything? Oh, I do, you are. I do, I do 100 push-ups a day. Okay. Probably like 20 pull-ups. Okay. Skating, lots of stretching. Yep, starting yep, to yep. do core. Mm. I'm trying to get in the best shape I've ever been in. I'm That's on the same, same. You know what I mean. I'm on the same tip. It yeah, feels great, you know. And yeah. now, now that we have all this knowledge from YouTube, yes, you know, we can study and figure oh, yeah. out what works for us and like what kind of diets work. And but when you take I, a break great. too from like you know abusing you know the things that we do, yeah, extra wise. Oh my That's God. when you see things really change, bro. Because like. I remember when I took a little break, I was like, dude, like I got to like 187. I'm like, bro, I'm, I feel like this don't feel right to me. Mm -hmm. But it's, I wasn't working out. Mm -hmm. I wasn't doing the extra things that I should be doing in that process. Yeah. So for me, I just felt like a big a tub, tub of shit, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. It didn't, it, didn't, it didn't resonate right. If I kind of wish I would have documented everything that I did mm -hmm. in this last month, because even just one month ago, I was pretty much a pile. Yeah. And I changed so fast, so quick. And now I am where I am now. And I'm getting stronger so fast. I can't believe it. I feel mm. like I'm changing slow. Really? Yeah. I mean, you look like you've been the same this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, but, are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? No, just, <laughs> just lifting weights, man. <laughs> just lifting water. weights. <laughs> no, okay. I get up in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. I do 45 minutes on the Peloton, endurance. Oh, great. <laughs> Sweat yeah. coming to sweat. What time do you wake up? Seven, seven o'clock. Okay, I wake up at five. Okay, I'm not on there yet. I want, <laughs> I want to wake up yeah. earlier, right? And then I do, I either do like 20 minutes of core mm -hmm. or 20 minutes of like uh, weightlifting. Cool. Right. And then after that, I drink a protein shake. Are you eating? Protein yeah. And then too? I have, and then I have a breakfast, which is eggs. Uh, I have it, was a, eggs. it was the Nick yeah. Nick Nick Dompierre oh, yeah. little diet thing. So yeah. I got the eggs. Mm the thing and then for lunch you know chicken rice like I, i'm going off of D dom pierre's old oh, awesome. okay. stuff That's cool. red yeah. i mean i'm not really yeah but that was yet. meant that well because you had a it's a weight gain it's yeah a weight gain. that's right you're right you had yours different right to you yes. wanted to gain i wanted weight. to gain weight yeah really maybe, maybe the amino acids would help with you too because i wasn't really growing muscle that quick until Let i started know. doing that well, mm. well let's talk more after the show the about the amino Definitely. acids because uh i don't know i don't know anything really about that i didn't either and you know what's funny i found out from instagram and youtube comments they started telling me like, oh, you're getting sore. This is happening. Start supplementing this, mm. trying this. Okay. And, you know, I got a pretty crazy list of stuff I'm doing right now. But, you know, I'm single. I don't have any kids. Yeah. So it's like I can invest into myself. Yeah, <laughs> so for sure. Well, it's been pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. Let's we got to get you a yeah. jump rope, dude. That I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I'm having really bad problems with my calves and strains. So I have to wear calf compressors now. Oh, wow. Okay. And I, I keep watching your jump rope stuff, man. Yeah. And I'm really impressed. So I know I got to do that. Oh, man. yeah. It, yeah. It, it's you, fake. It's actually cut in the middle. It's just two strings. <laughs> and it looks like it looks hey, like it's gone. That's still a thing, though. You know, they have, they have ropeless... Jump, rope. jump ropes, yeah. which is interesting. I've never tried it, but like, What's, so it's something spinning for, and you're just jumping. Yeah, you have because sometimes you can't, like for people to travel and stuff like that. Like oh. they want the workout, but they jump roping home. Yeah, like inside their house or whatever. And Got they, you. So it it makes sense. I've just never tried it. Yeah. Cross my, rope has that. They make them. Part of my warm up before I skate now is I just sit there and jump around like I'm jump roping. Oh, just, nice. to, just to get the blood flowing. Yeah, you know, because no. I know to not get the calf strains. That's mainly what it is. I have to get my blood flowing before I start doing anything. You do the runner stretch where you go up against the wall and put the. That's a good calf stretch because it good. loosens the calves. A lot I know of injuries. You're talking about a lot of injuries come from you know uh, tight calves, tight hammies. Mm. So you got to watch out. I know the main thing that's mm. hurting me, and I've been talking to a lot of other guys about it, is pushing uh, too fast. Because I skate in the mornings. I wake up at five. I go to the beach, go for like a mile walk, then I go to the skate park and start skating. And I would assume that going on my walk, my calves would be good. Uh -huh. 
they haven't been. Mm, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. try the runner stretch okay. up against a wall. You know, do the it loosens the calves tremendously. I'll do that. I had Achilles Achilles tendon injury, and that was one of the reasons because my calves are so tight. They yeah. always are tight. So I, every time I'm going to go do something, I do that for ten minutes, and I'm good. Cool. Yeah, will, it's really good. I will. That that is a great stretch. Um, all, with the jump roping thing, at first you can kind of your your calves can get kind of messed up. Yeah. So because but you have to be really patient with it. But <laughs> over time, like I, it feels awesome. They're now. gonna get beast. Yeah. They're they're <laughs> like I'm, I look at my I'm like damn my legs are pretty like my legs are in shape. I don't know about the rest of my body. But <laughs> Yeah, kind of got to do both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But I think you'd be psyched on them. I think I will, dude. Yeah. That's probably the next thing I'm doing. I will say uh, this. Even though I don't feel like I'm changing, and I'm not in any rush, right? I'm just Neither doing, am I. I'm just doing my yeah. thing, and I just want to be healthier and eat healthier. Um, but I do notice that I'm more clear-headed. I'm more, I have more energy. Um, I have, you know, uh, back, you know, a couple months ago, like I'd just be around the house, like, oh, okay, do the, I really want to do the dishes right now. I can see, I can see the change in you. And then now yeah. I'm just like, oh yeah, do the dishes. Do, okay. Let me fold my laundry. Let me do, do my thing over here. You like, actually fold your laundry now? Yeah, I fold it. Oh my God. <laughs> Cleaned out the bathtub this morning. I said, listen, I've got Nigel Alexander coming today, man. I'm going to, I'm going to clean my bathtub. I'm going to. spot is going to look. Fantastic. Yeah, man. I'm slowly getting it, man. Yeah. But it's a slow change, but yeah. when it really starts setting in, man, it, you feel younger for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Your mind is definitely clear. I, I don't know if you're not drinking right now, but for me, uh, not drinking, it's wow. Yeah. Like supplement, like getting all the alcohol out of your brain and your system. And oh, this is a really good tip. They're just finding out. Mm -hmm. If you're a drinker and you stop, start taking creatine. It does something really amazing to your brain. Oh, wow. But yeah, it kind what? of like reverses what alcohol does to you. But you have to stop drinking for it. Yeah. To, okay. Hey, drink Otherwise, you drink, yeah. you can't keep drink drinking creatine. Not, what are you putting in your beer? Creatine. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> not going to work. Helps with getting all that stuff out of my brain. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the good things aren't going to work unless you stop drinking. Right, right, you know right. what I mean? And that's yeah. always a pain in the butt. I, I'm very lucky and blessed that I can just stop. Yeah. Hmm. So I've done it a lot of times and thank God I have that ability because I try to talk to other people about it. I'm like, nah, man, I've never stopped. I'm like, really? You know? And it's like, okay, there I'm, go. thank God I can do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Sure. Definitely. Nigel, first of all, dude, thank you so much, no dude. Been Anytime, dude. Been really Anytime. fun. <laughs> I love hanging out, talking <laughs> shop with you, man. Here's a Good nine club. Out. So you got to axe out nine club yeah, hoodie, dude. Listen, sick. it's summer coming up, but you put this on, you put this on ice. And hey, I wake up in the mornings, bro. Oh, there, there you go. go. And I Still love to chilly. sweat. There you so go. I need to sweat Boom. all the time. Uh, stance socks. Look at this. Oh, sick. You guys have your own socks? Yeah, too? we got our own socks. Yeah. And we got our own water bottles through Yeti. Look at this. What? Nice yes. little Yeti water yes. bottle right this there. This is so dope. And listen. Here's some Nine Club stickers. We we get this in a, a Nigel NKA video <laughs> that gets over a million views. We get twenty bucks, dude. <laughs> right there. Hey, I'm gonna nice. be invoicing you for I, that. I, I, listen, <laughs> 20, hundred a million views, twenty bucks. Not bad. Not a bad no deal. No problem. <laughs> You'd be the first one to invoice. Do it, please. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel, thank you so much. No problem. Yeah. If yeah, you guys yeah, out yeah. there aren't subscribed, subscribe to the channel, like, comment, all that goofy stuff. It helps. And uh, it thank really you guys does. for watching yeah. over Listen all the years. Listen to what he's saying. And uh, thank you. Yes. <laughs>